să la snap. Nu are bară. De bufar, de bufar, de bufar, de Even so, no but curse, they can no. curse. And now, uh, I don't know how to start recording myself. You guys are upsetting me so much. <laughs> I, I need to eat now. I am hungry already. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. First of all, I do apologize for the delay. Some technical difficulties, family. Um, thank you all for, for joining us. Um, please make sure you share the link to all your groups and so we can yeah have a have a nice audience so essentially what's gonna happen today what's gonna happen today family is the following we are essentially gonna be having debating two topics so the first one is whether the Quran that's the Quran teach Tawhid and because it's a formal debate I would like to be as like this and obviously you guys can summon some changes if you like but ideally I would like it like this so like a 15 minute presentation okay. arguing for and against for and against, and then we move on to say rebuttals, so four rounds of five minutes each of rebuttals, and then we move on to a, um, a crossfire question and answers, which again will be a five minutes, four rounds of five minutes, and then we'll take questions from, from the viewers, and then we do a wrap up, and then we'll, we'll wrap up that particular section of the debate, and then we move on to what, um, does the Bible teach the Trinity and mm -hmm. the deity of Christ, and the format will obviously, I would like it to be the same, I don't know what you guys think about that. Go ahead, I guess. Yep, yeah. go ahead. Which one? Uh, okay, who how, about I, how, how are you, Islam Defender? Okay, so ideally, I would like you to, to start. I would like you to give us your your best reasons, your best evidence to to believe that the Quran does actually teach Tawhid. Tawhid. And, um, Tawhid, Tawhid. yeah, Tawhid, the, the oneness, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, to be fair, I'm gonna be. Okay, I'm gonna so, be fair. I'm gonna be. So, I'm gonna so, remake just, just just before you start. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you. I know you eager, Yakia. I know. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, uh, yeah. Just, yeah. Just before just before we start, as I said at the beginning, I, I will. I'm going to remain neutral for this debate, which means right. that I would like to encourage non-Christians to also come and and join the debate. Right. Um, obviously, join the chat. <laughs> if you have a particular yeah. question, yeah. we will give you the time to post your questions. We're not going to put the phone down on you. We'll make sure that you are treated nicely and to make sure that you guys get the answers that, for your okay. questions that uh, is troubling you at the moment. So let me set up the timer. And of course, Jack here yeah. is going to be the one who is going to start the debate. One second, one second. I'm just showing off. I just got a new mic. That's why I'm showing off. I'm, I'm showing off my, my vocal cords. Sure you are. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. So where's the timer here? There is the timer. Oh my god, my head is everywhere right now. Yaki, okay, are you ready or or you would like uh, to maybe no I, I'm trying now uh, you know after the confusion no wait yeah, yeah. after after the confusion I need to find the uh, the note about Tawheed because uh, this is uh, this is how it, it all goes uh, goes as a wrong way anyway I will find it now. Give me one no problem. No problem. Done, just, guys, uh, <clears throat> just the Christians, keep me in prayer. My voice was given out, and I'm hoping I don't have COVID 19. So pray by the grace of Jesus, I don't have that. Uh, of course, you don't have that. Okay. Yeah, have that. Because when I'm at the mosque, cool. it's spike. A lot of people, even my friend had it. So I'm trusting the okay. Lord, my grace and mercy. <clears throat> uh, of course. Uh, I will start to talk. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Your 50 minutes. Yeah, here starts now. Okay, uh, I will start talking about Tawheed, but right. then I need to get some verses explanation, the no. explanation. Then I will look for it. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Sam can join and can can speak a little bit, uh, maybe two three minutes. Uh, so introduction as well, and then I can find the uh, uh, the, the other part. Uh, anyway, uh, let me start. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon all of all of you. I start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa taala, the most merciful, most uh, gracious, uh, all all compass, uh, uh, co compassionate, and uh, peace be upon all of you. And I, I hope, uh, uh, Sam, you don't get uh, COVID nineteen or twenty or twenty one, and I hope uh, no one get it. And uh, uh, keep yourself safe. 
Uh, I hope uh, everyone, uh, we are sorry about the delay and uh, it's technical uh, technical issue. So we are sorry, but we, we managed to sort it out in 20 minutes instead of uh, wait until uh, uh, one hour and a half. Uh, regarding Tawheed, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, oneness uh, in the Quran uh, uh, told us that he is only one, only one God. Uh, chapter 112, uh, uh, chapter uh, verse number one and four, it says, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, And the Prophet, peace upon him, said, uh, uh, This surah, it's, uh, it weighed like uh, three quarters of the Quran because actually uh, the Muslim uh, uh, faith is based on this surah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, told us he is one he never begat nor begotten and he have uh, no one to associate with him as he is the only god and uh, we see we see this in uh, in uh, uh, in isaiah as well uh, there is a similar uh, uh, similar verse. Uh, it confirms that there's no one like, uh, no one is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will give you the reference from the Bible. Where's my glasses? Here we are. Okay. Uh, Isaiah 44, 6. The Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Uh, apart from me, there's no God. Uh, uh, the one similar to Kul Hu Allahu Ahad, the, uh, uh, the verse uh, in the Quran, uh, Surah Al Samad, chapter 112, uh, 1 4. Uh, Isaiah 46, verse number 9 I am God and there's no other. I am God and there's none like me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique uh, as the creator. He is the perfect, the perfect, the self sustainer. Uh, the uh, the God of uh, of all the universe and Tawheed, according to scholar, uh, they divide Tawheed into four category, uh, like Tawheed al Abudiya, Tawheed al Rububiya, Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat, and Tawheed al Uluhiya, the oneness of divine lordship, oneness of divine nature the oneness of worship, one God, and the oneness of divine names and attribute. So this uh, four, uh, uh, four category, it talk about the oneness of God in the first place, that he is only one God, as uh, chapter, chapter 2, uh, verse uh, 255, it says, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum, uh, Allah uh, is the only God uh, that uh, the ever living uh, who sustain everything by himself. In chapter 3, verse uh, uh, verse number 2, uh, it says the same and confirm Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. And now uh, Surah Al Hashar, uh, I, need, I need to find the, my, my paper, but I'm not able to find it. So uh, Anyway, I will I will mention it. Uh, uh, Surah Al Hashar. Uh, I, I can't find it uh, with, with my head. Uh, I will I will try. Uh, can you put me on hold and let Sam? Uh, because I need to find uh, my paper as I get confused with the stuff now, and I need him to start so I can I can sure. check it. Sure. By the way, Mod, <clears throat> give him freedom if he wants to stop and change the format i'm okay with that okay you're listening mod one can you hear me yeah exactly let's be fair to yaka because yeah, what i'm saying is if he wants to stop if he wants to change format i'm free so you don't have to follow something strict right yeah that's right we're okay. flexible we're flexible we want to make sure that he provides the right evidence for this debate yeah. All right, now he wants a few minutes to comment, so let me just begin by yeah. saying, just if you can, yeah, yeah, can you just put your sound down a little bit or mute it? Maybe you can mute him because we can hear him in the background. Okay, are we ready? <clears throat> 
Okay, just make sure you guys can hear me. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I beseech the Father in the name of Jesus, his beloved Son, <clears throat> by the power of his Holy Spirit to fill me and anoint me by his Spirit to glorify Jesus Christ by speaking truth without error, speaking it passionately, <clears throat> accurately, and boldly in the name of Jesus. And I pray the Father will speak health to my lungs, my chest, and throat, strengthen my voice Amen. to be used to glorify Jesus and the blood of Jesus Christ wash us Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus' name. Now, <clears throat> he did go to Isaiah, and I'm hoping he will defer that to the discussion of Trinity and the Bible, because going to the Isaiah is not going to help my brother in humanity. And I'm going to call him brother in humanity for two reasons. The God of Isaiah is not the God of Muhammad, and here's why. In <clears throat> Isaiah, the true God, Yahweh or Jehovah, he is a spiritual father, Notice what I said, spiritual father who has spiritual children, not a physical father who sires children sexually. Isaiah 63, 16, <clears throat> doubtless you are our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us <clears throat> and Israel acknowledge us not. You are our father, O Lord, our redeemer. Your name is from everlasting. Isaiah 64, verse 8. But now, O Lord, O Jehovah, you are our father. We are the clay, you are our potter, we are all the work of your hands. So the true God is a father, spiritual father to his people. Interestingly, he quotes Surah Al-Ikhlas, chapter 112, where it says, Lam Well, again, Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7 says, Surah Al-Ikhlas is false, <clears throat> and Muhammad is a false prophet. Why? Because in Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7, it says, For unto us a child is born, Yelid Yulad. Hebrew, Yelid Yulad, a child, Yelid Yulad, born <clears throat> unto us the son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Allah Al Jabbar in Arabic, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. So the book of Isaiah condemns Muhammad as a false prophet in the Quran as a book of deception. And again, I have to be honest, I'm not trying to be rude, but I can't lie and tickle ears. So I don't think he, he should go to the book of Isaiah. When he says that there are four categories of Tawheed, <clears throat> I'm going to have to respectfully correct Yahya, and I don't want to teach you your religion. It's not th four categories, it's three. You confuse Ubudiya and Uluhiya, and you said they're separate. No, Tawheed and Ubudiya and Uluhiya are the same category. In fact, I'm going to challenge Yahya to prove me wrong. Quote me, to me one of your Salafi scholars that divide Ubudiya from Uluhiya. It's one and the same, it's three categories. So please, I don't want to teach you your deen. I don't want to correct you. Please represent your religion accurately. I expect you to misrepresent my deen, which is why I'm going to correct you here. But please do not misrepresent your deen, your religion, your Quran, because I'm going to be here to correct you by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, your God and master and mine. But I'll let you now make your points because I'm going to show you that no matter what you quote from the Quran, it doesn't give you only one person of Allah. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, Thank you, can, Sam. <coughs> okay, you. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear you me now? Okay. Yeah. Re regarding regarding oh, yeah, tawhid, yeah. Rega regarding tawhid, the scholar, some of them category categorize. They say it's four, and that's why I said, uh, I said uh, four. So I come to. Uh, the bigger picture instead of saying three and four. And I will repeat it now, and you correct me later on if you wish. Uh, believe in the existence of God, Tawheed al uh, be, uh, Believe in the Lordship of Allah, this is another one, Uluhiya. Tawheed al the divinity of Allah, this is three. And uh, uh, they believe and the name of attribute of Allah, this is four. So uh, divinity, believe in the existence of Allah, this is one. Believe in the Lordship of the only God, Allah. Believe in the Rububiyya, divinity of Allah, this is a three. And the fourth is uh, believe in the name and attribute of Allah because he is unique in this four category and this is why I said four so uh, now I'm, I'm going to give 
the verses from a reference from the Quran, which talk about there's only one God, one Lord. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, verse number uh, uh, chapter two, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 255. And I mentioned, Allah, la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. Allah, there is no God except Him, the ever living, the sustainer of all. Uh, Surah uh, chapter 3, Al Umran, uh, verse number 2. It says the same Allah, there is no God except Him, the ever living sustainer of all. We go now to chapter 7, Surah Al Araf, verse number 54. Indeed, your Lord is Allah who created heaven and earth and six day, then established himself about the throne. Who Allah Ladi La ilaha illahu Alim al Ghaibu wa Shahada Hu al Rahman al Rahim. Then we go to Surat Al Hashar, uh, chapter 59, verse 22 24, which say, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayu al-qayyum. 59.22 Allah, the knower of unseen and the witness most merciful, the sovereign, the pure, the perfection, the bestower of faith, the exalted and might, the compeller, the superior exalted Allah about above whatever they associate, associate him with. He is Allah, the creator, the inventor, the fashioner. Uh, to him belong the best names and all in heaven exalted him and might and wise. Then we have chapter 42, Surah Shura, 42, verse 51. It say, it's not for any human that Allah should speak except by revelation or from behind a veil, or he sent a messenger to reveal what he wills. He is indeed the most high and wise. And we we end up we end up uh, already with uh, uh, Surah Al Ikhlas 112, chapter uh, verse number one and four. I already say it. And uh, now Allow me to, to respond to uh, uh, to Sam uh, about uh, that Christ is uh, is the God uh, and let's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you still got you still got five minutes to finish your your um your uh, intro uh, on that uh, run this to heat so okay. if you, if you wanna unless you wanna finish uh, here. Uh, one, one, one. Uh, I would like to finish it here because I already gave reference about uh, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yeah. I would like to respond uh, regarding Isaiah which okay. uh, which Sam he mentioned that right. yeah. uh, that yeah. God will, is a Jesus. Yeah. When 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 we move oh, on to yeah, that yeah. can I correct real real quickly one let's maintain order. I didn't quote Isaiah 9 to say God is Jesus. So yeah yeah I know you're pretending to hear what you want. Hear what I said and deal because anytime you misrepresent me, it's going to look bad for you. So I didn't say God is Jesus and Isaiah. I said Isaiah proves you're wrong. So deal with that if you want, but don't attack what we call straw man because I said, yeah, yeah, anytime you misrepresent me, it's not going to look good for you. So be honest. I didn't say God is Jesus. I said Isaiah 9 says a child is born. So deal with that. Okay, fair enough. Okay, cool. uh, wait, wait, wait. Sam. Yes, sir. Can you, can you give us your 15 minutes of introduction as to what, because obviously we heard Yaki's position yeah. as to why the Quran actually teaches Tawheed. So give us your 15 minutes as to why yeah. the Quran does not teach Tawheed. So therefore exactly. he has points to, to refute on the next round. So let, then, let, let me set up your, and let then you can come, come back to these points that All right, just, I don't, want, I don't want to talk over each other because we want, let me know when I'm down to two minutes so I can wrap up. Because nothing that Yahya said proved Tawheed. Because again, understand what Tawheed means. Tawheed means that Allah is not just one in his that essence and his characteristics. What he said, Asma names and Sifat. He's supposed to be 
quote unquote one person, even though Muslims don't use the term one person. He can quote 50,000 verses that says Allah is one, there's nothing like unto him. But the Quran contradicts itself because there are many things exactly like Allah. So let's begin with Ruh Allah. He just said Allah, there's nothing like unto him. The Quran says that's a lie. Why? Because the spirit is exactly like Allah. Because the Quran says Allah breathes out the spirit. <clears throat> so the spirit is not part of creation. The spirit can appear as a man. The spirit can appear as a man. He can speak and be spoken to. And he creates and gives life. <clears throat> so I hope Yahya makes the mistake in saying that Ruh is Jibreel, alayhi salam. I hope. So I'm, I'm going to wait for him to rebut me because we're going to have fun with the Quran by the grace of Jesus Christ. But let me show you that the spirit is not part of creation. Allah breathes out the spirit. That means it comes out of him. Now, unless he believes that Allah has parts that are created, nothing that comes from Allah can be creation. Chapter 66, verse 12 of the Quran. <clears throat> Mary, Imran's daughter, who guarded her virginity. We'll talk about that translation later. We breathe into her of our spirit. We breathe into her of our spirit. So the spirit came out of Allah. Another verse, chapter 15, verses 28 to 29. When thy Lord said to the angels, See, I am creating a mortal of a clay, of mud molded. <clears throat> when I have shaped him and breathe my spirit into him. Breathe my spirit into him. Now, chapter 19, verses 16 to 21. <clears throat> chapter 19, verses 16 to 21. Mentioned in the book, Mary, when she withdrew from her people <clears throat> to an eastern place, and she took a veil apart from them. We sent unto her our ruh. I hope he doesn't say it's the angel Jibreel. I hope. For his sake, I want to be merciful to him. Then we sent unto her our spirit that presented himself to her, a man without fault. So the spirit appears as a man without fault, a perfect looking man. She said, I take refuge in the all merciful from thee. If thou fears God, he said, I am but a messenger. I am Rasul of your Lord to give you, I will give you a boy most pure. So according to the Quran, the spirit comes to Mary, appears as a man, tells her, I'm going to give you a son. How? Well, that's where 66, 12, Surah Al-Tahreem comes in. Allah then sent that spirit, breathed the spirit out of himself to enter Mary to cause her to get pregnant. So who created the life in Mary? The Ruh. The ruh comes from what? <clears throat> Not creation, out of Allah as his breath. So the spirit creates and gives life exactly like Allah. No wonder the Quran says Allah is the best of creators, but even then he's not the best of creators, because that means there are other creators, because the spirit is equal to him in creating. Not only is the spirit equal to Allah in creating, so is Jesus. And what do I, why do I say Jesus? Because according <clears throat> to the Quran, Jesus creates exactly like Allah does and like the Spirit does. In chapter 3, verse 49 of the Quran, chapter 3, verse 49, as a messenger to the children of Israel, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord that I create for you the verb, create for you from clay, from clay, the form of a bird, then I blow into it and it becomes the bird, by Allah's permission. And I heal the blind and the lepers and give life to the dead by Allah's permission. Be it the Allah. And I'll explain what be it the Allah means and what it doesn't mean. It's not quwa. There's a difference between quwa and to say be it the Allah. But let's put that aside. Notice how Jesus creates according to the Quran. He creates the same verb, Arabic verb, create, used of Allah, creating Adam from clay. <clears throat> Jesus creates from clay. Allah creates from clay. Allah breathes into the clay and that clay comes to life. Jesus breathes into the clay, and that clay comes to life. Here, chapter 15, verses 27, 35 of the Quran. We created man from clay, from black molded loam. And when I breathed of my spirit into him, kneel down and prostrate. And then later on it says, near 35, I will not bow to a mortal whom you created of dry clay, of black molded loam. So only Jesus in the Quran, among the prophets and messengers, Creates like Allah from clay, breathes life into the clay, and makes it a living being like Allah. And only Jesus in the Quran, among the messengers and the prophets, and Yahya can prove me wrong, no other prophet messenger gives life to the dead. In fact, giving life to the dead is only said of Allah. So now you have Allah, the Spirit, and Jesus. All of them are creators, and they create equally the same way. And by the way, for Jesus to blow life 
into a clay object and make it alive. That means Jesus possesses the spirit of Allah, the Ruh Allah of Allah. Why do I say that? Because how did Allah breathe life into Adam? He breathed his spirit into Adam. He came to life. So what is Jesus breathing? His, his physical breath? No, he's breathing out the Ruh. But the Ruh belongs to Allah, but now it belongs to Jesus. So no, the Quran does not teach Tawheed. And since he's a Salafi, and how I know he's a Salafi? Because he broke down Tawheed. He broke down Tawheed into four categories. Again, he's mistaken, but I'll ignore that. It is the Salafis only that break Tawheed into three. The Ashari and the Maturidi say that's an innovation. That's Bida. Nu Ha Mim Keller. And other Sunnis who are not Salafis say that's Bida. To break it down into three. That's an innovation. Since he's a Salafi, I know he believes this. You believe the Quran is Kalam Allah. And if it's Kalam Allah, that means it's uncreated. So here's my challenge to Yahya, which he's going to have to answer, because I'm not going to let him get away with it. If the Quran is Kalam Allah, speech of Allah, one of his sifat, and Kalam of Allah is not created, speech of Allah cannot be created. You said the Quran is uncreated. Now I'm going to ask him the question, and he's got to get ready to answer it. Is the Quran Allah or it's not Allah? If he says, I want you guys to pay attention. If he says the Quran is not Allah, you have two uncreated things that are not the same. So that destroys your Tawheed. Let me repeat it again. If you say the Quran is not Allah, you have two things that are now uncreated. You just destroy Tawheed. But if you say it's Allah, now you're in trouble. Because if it's Allah, that means a part of Allah became a book. Because the Quran is kitab, it's a book. So if it is Allah, Allah became a book. So when you touch your Quran, you're touching your Allah in physical form. There's no way around this, my brother, in humanity. How many minutes do I have? One, how many minutes do I have? One. Hello, one. How many minutes I got? Seven minutes. One, you're hurting me. Okay. I love you, my seven, friend. Seven okay, minutes. Good man. Now, we're going to get even more. Since I got seven minutes, let's have some fun. We're going to have more fun, okay? Hold on, let's do this. I just want to make sure you're hearing me. Now, he says he, he worships Allah and, and that Islam is the purest religion there is to mankind and the worship of Allah is pure. No, he doesn't. He smooches a black stone. So I want Yahya to explain how does kissing, smooching, smothering a black stone comport with Tawheed al ubudiya Tawheed al-Uluhiya. Here, let me explain what I mean. <clears throat> Sa'ad bin Jubair is reported to have said, I heard Ibn Abbas saying that Allah's messenger said, the stone must come on the day of resurrection and will have two eyes, the black stone, two eyes. This is from Sunan Ibn Majah. Two eyes to see with and a, and a tongue to talk with, bearing witness for him who caressed it with truth. Okay, did you hear it? And this is Hassan. Sunan Ibn Maja, Hassan Hadith, Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's cousin says, the black stone that Yahya is supposed to smooch and touch and cuddle and kiss like his prophet, it will come on the day of resurrection with two eyes, a tongue, and it will bear witness for those that touched it and smothered it. Oh Allah, forgive them. Oh Allah, I am the Shafi for... And this is Tawheed? You want to convince us this is Tawheed? Okay, here, let me read something else for you. <clears throat> Jami Tirmidhi, Jami Tirmidhi, this again is Hassan Hadith, again Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas narrated that the Messenger of Allah said about the black stone, by Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and a tongue that it speaks with testifying to whoever touches it in truth. Allahu Akbar, the, the stone is going to be Shafi, it's going to speak for Yahya. And Yahya tells me he believes Tawheed. Let's talk for Allah Rabbil Alameen. Then you got the hadith in Bukhari where Amr ibn al-Khattab goes to smooch the black stone. And he says, I know that you're a stone, that you neither hurt nor benefit anyone. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not kiss you. So my question is, why did your prophet kiss a stone that came from the pagans, the kuffar? And why did your prophet say, if you kiss it, it will be your shafi on the day of judgment? Don't deceive yourself, Yahya. Your religion is anything but Tawheed. It is shirk, it is polytheism, and it's a perversion of the truth of the Bible. And I'll give him the remaining time to interact with me. I got a lot more, but this is enough to begin with. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. You still have five minutes. Uh, That's okay. 
for Thank your you open for introduction. So just to let the, the viewers know, so we have a, um, a formatted debate. It's a formal debate. So we just did 15 minutes each of uh, open statements, and we're going to be moving on to what we call rebuttals. So we're going to have four, four rounds of, <clears throat> excuse me, five minutes rebuttals, um, which will start with, uh, with Yahya. Let me unmute him. Uh, yeah, uh, you heard his opening statement. We would like you to rebut some of the key points that you managed to get from that opinion statement. So let me set your timer to five minutes and it starts now. Okay. Regarding uh, regarding your uh, your uh, your question, is Quran Allah? Allah is not a book. Allah is the creator, and Allah's word is the Quran. So Allah, when he speak his his word, he revealed a, a word which been collected after he revealed it to Prophet Muhammad, and it's been collected and it become a book as guidance to all mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He is the only creator. And when he say about something to be, it will be. Uh, Regarding Jesus, peace upon him, uh, Jesus, he said himself, I can do nothing of myself. And all what he does is by permission of the one who create him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he w w was willing to create uh, uh, Jesus, he sent his uh, angel Gabriel, which we call Ruh al Qudus. And he came to Mary and he told her, you will have a child. And she told him, none, nobody have touched me. And he told her, it's a decree and it's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will have it. And then he blew and her garment and she conceived by the will of God, not by any sexual intervention. And this is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create uh, Adam and he shape him and fashion him. And then he blow a spirit of him into Adam. As he blow a spirit into, uh, and he sent his spirit and his word be, and he become, come to be. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to create, he said, he just said, be, and it will be. And that's the way, uh, why we say uh, that Jesus is the same uh, as, as Adam and creation. God create Adam from clay, then he blow off his spirit unto him, he become my life. And we all live by this spirit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we receive by angel when we are God create us and the womb of our our mother uh, re, regarding two minutes uh, two minutes okay uh, <laughs> two minutes uh, what, what can I say as well uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give the authority to Jesus and he teach him what to say and what to do but it doesn't mean that he is uh, equal with God, because according to your Bible, Jesus teach the Father is greater than the Son, the Father is greater than all. And as I mentioned in Isaiah, there's none is like God. And God, there's only one God. If Jesus is a creator like God, is a creator without the permission, uh, uh, that means he is God. And uh, Jesus himself, he teach the Lord our God is one. As all the messenger and prophet, they teach the oneness of God and your Bible. Uh, the Lord our God is one. And Jesus, he didn't say is more than one. And be, regarding uh, uh, the black stone, I believe that the black stone is but a stone. We don't worship it. Worship it. We kiss it as we honor honor this stone as Adam, when he was sent out of paradise, he grabbed it and he used to wipe 
he stays with it. So as uh, our forefather Abraham, he used it to put it in the corner of his his uh, 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 the house of Allah and call people to circulate around and worship only one God, uh, Allah. Uh, we we Muslim we glorify the stone as a stone as from from heaven but uh, i just would like to say something that everything in this dunya and this life would be uh, a witness in front of god about us and god will ask ask even our skin to uh, be witness against against us and allah time time okay time Okay, let me know. I'm okay, ready. cool, uh, Sam. Okay, your okay. mic, Sam. Five minutes okay. now. All right, yeah, yeah. Be patient. We're going to get to Jesus in the Bible in the next section because you misquoted John 5 19. And I'm going to turn it against you because John 5 19 again proves the Quran is false, Muhammad is a false prophet, Allah is a false God. But I want everyone to hear what you said. You said Allah is not a book, the Quran is word of Allah. That means you ignored what I said, Yahya. Yeah. So I'm going to go again, repeat it again slowly so you can get it. Since you just said Allah is not a book, that means you're saying the Quran is not Allah, it's the word of Allah. But you are a Salafi and you belong to Ahl al Sunnah wa Jama'at. Don't play games with me. As a Muslim, you believe the Quran is uncreated. <clears throat> it's not created. That means the Quran is eternal. But you just said, everyone heard you, Allah did not become a book. That means Allah is not the same as the Quran because the Quran did become a book, it became a kitab. So now, if the Quran is not Allah, and the Quran is not created, you have to, you destroyed Tawheed. Thank you, Yahya. But then you said that it was gathered and it was compiled. I guess you forgot what chapter 43 of the Quran, verses 3 and 4 say, that your Quran is in Umm al-Kitab, mother of the book. So yes, the earthly Quran was gathered, compiled by men, but there is the mother of the book that's with Allah. It says it's in the mother of the book with us. So now, Yahya, you have a problem. If the Quran is in the mother of the book, that is the mother of the book. But Allah said, how can he have a child without a girlfriend or offspring? So then how can the Quran have a mother if the mother doesn't have a husband and the Quran doesn't have a father? So according to the logic of your Quran, Allah is the daddy of the Quran and the mommy of the Quran is the wife of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Now, secondly, the second mistake you made. You just said that Jibreel is the Ruh. I said, I hope you don't make that mistake. You made the mistake, so I think you like to get punished. I'm going to challenge you in front of everyone. Quote one verse in the entire Quran that says Jibreel, Gabriel is Ruh al-Quddus. Jibreel is Ruh al-Quddus. But let's go with it. Let's say you're right. You just told everyone, they heard you. Jibreel, he's the one who caused Mary to get pregnant and the angel breathes our spirit by which we live. You just committed shirk, ya akhi, my brother in humanity, because you just admit that Jibreel and this other angel, whoever it is that gives us the spirit, they're the ones who create our life in the womb, be it ni Allah. So now that means Allah has many partners. He's not alone because the malaika, the angels can create like Allah. But I thought you're trying to prove Tawheed, not destroy Tawheed. Don't help me to destroy your Tawheed. Defend it. So guys here, Gabriel gives life, he creates. The angel that gave us our spirit, he, they, they give life, they create, because they're the ones who give us the spirit by which we love, we, we live. And according to him, bithni Allah, because Allah wanted this to, to be so. And then guys, pay attention to what's even more hilarious. He says, we glorify the stone. Astaghfirullah, Allah, ya mushrik. You, you idolater, you just said, everyone heard you, we glorify the stone, even though it is only a stone, but we glorify. And then, I don't know if you're ignorant or you're lying, I'm going to be charitable and say you're ignorant, you don't know your Quran. You said, Adam grabbed it and wiped his tears with it. I'm going to challenge you in front of everyone, quote the ayah in the Quran that says, Adam grabbed it and he wiped his tears with it. Quote the ayah in the Quran that says Ibrahim is the one who established the black stone. Quote the ayah in the Quran that says that Ibrahim went to Mecca. Don't give me Bakka. Bakka is not Mecca. Don't make that mistake. See, I'm already helping you not to embarrass yourself. Don't go to chapter 3 of the Quran 
verse 96 and say, Bakka is Mecca. Nowhere in the Quran does it say, Bakka is Mecca. So I'm going to challenge you from your book. Show me Ibrahim and Ishmael were in Mecca. They built the Kaaba and placed the black stone. And if you go to the Hadith, it's going to be more embarrassing for you. So let's come back again. You admit the Quran is not Allah, but the Quran is uncreated. That's two. That's not one. That's not Tawheed. You admit that Jibreel, who's the Ruh, he's the one who create life in Mary's womb. Now you have another entity besides the Quran that's equal to Allah, like Allah. He's the creator. Then you said, we glorify the stone, even though it's a stone. And then you said, my skin will testify. I can understand your body testifying against you. But why a stone? When the stones were venerated by the pagans, the kuffar, and they used the same argument your prophet used. They told your prophet, oh, we only worship them to bring us closer to Allah so they can be intercessors. Muhammad said, no, Allah condemns you. But then he makes the stupid mistake of saying, oh, but this stone, you venerate it, and it will bring you closer to Allah, and it will be your shafi. So your prophet sounds exactly the same like the pagans. He's no better than the pagans. In fact, in many places, he's much worse than them. Yahya, don't help me destroy Tawheed, please. Time. Allah. Time, time. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sam. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's, take a, let's take a little break here. I mean, uh, fears interchanges here. Just, I'd, like, I'd like to thank um, yeah, everyone that's tuning in. Make sure you guys are sharing the link as well. And hit the like button as well. Don't forget about that. Now, Yakia, uh, we're going to go to the second round of your rebuttal. So your five minutes will start um, now. Regarding, regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I mentioned in Surah, وَمَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ أَنْ يُقَلِّمُهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا وَحْيًا أَوْ مِنْ وَرَاءِ كِتَابٍ أَوْ يُرْسَلَ رَسُولًا فَيُوحِي بِإِذْنِهِ مَا يَشَاءِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, it's not for any man to be spoken directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but uh, behind the veil and through an angel or inspiration. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has, with his permission, all the angels do what he will. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, live and settle on according to his majesty on the throne and he is unseen and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, send his when he want to to create anyone he send angel and that mean the angel they do what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order them order them to do as all all the universe and heaven uh, and on earth uh, submit to his will and to, to according to what he says and what he command. And this is my response to you regarding regarding. And I don't have I don't have a proof from the Quran regarding uh, the stone uh, that it, it uh, that. Uh, uh, our father, forefather Adam brought it, but this is uh, a hadith, and it might be wrong, uh, and it, it might be right. But uh, regardless, when Ibrahim, peace upon him, and his Ismail, they uh, built the Kaaba after uh, Noah a flood, uh, they built it, then uh, they have the stone, and they place it where it is. And even after uh, they demolish it at the time of the prophet, uh, the tribe were about to have a uh, war between them. Then the prophet, he suggests that they put it in, uh, on, on his own uh, shirt and he place it where it is. We glorify it not in a way that we worship it, but we glorify it as a way of uh, respect as it is unique stone from uh, paradise and we don't worship uh, anyone but almighty god uh, regarding uh, regarding jibril jibril is ruh al kudus allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only ruh because 
uh, there's two difference between ruh and nafas. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ruh belongs to him. And this is how we come to life through this ruh. When he blow his ruh into us, we became alive. And when the angel of death come, he collect this ruh, then we die. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, uh, on the day of a judgment, uh, Israfil will blow and the trumpet and each ruh will come back to its body. Then we will be resurrected and we will be gathered in front of Allah. And second, I, I might be ignorant, but I don't lie. I might be ignorant, but I don't lie. And I don't rely on hadith much because I like to rely on Quran. And Quran, uh, Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not Allah. And the mother of the book, uh, the mother of the book, uh, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I said maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, a greater book than it include all uh, all uh, what's on on life and the scene and the unseen and this book will be revealed up to, up on Prophet Muhammad والسلام, and he will will be witness against all uh, humankind as he is the last messenger messenger for, uh, from God and he confirmed the message of all the prophet before him and confirm there's there's only one God as he is the creator he is the one who bestow his time his time okay thank you yeah thank you thank, thank you cool excellent uh, Sam your five minutes of rebuttals uh, okay. starts now all right thank the Lord Jesus you just said something I want everyone to hear you don't lie so I'll give you the benefit of doubt you're ignorant of your religion then you say, I rely on Quran, I, you, I don't rely on Hadith much. Now, guys, hear what he said. I don't rely on Hadith much. Yet the story of Abraham and Ishmael going to the to Mecca and building the Kaaba and placing the black stone, I'm going to challenge him. Show me that from the Quran. They were in Mecca. They built the Kaaba and placed the black stone <clears throat> while they were in Mecca building the Kaaba. That's not Quran. That's not Surah Al-Baqarah. That's Hadith. Then you said that the angels come and then they... <clears throat> Give us our spirit, our ruh. I know the hadith says that. The hadith says that after conception, on a certain day, around the 120th day, then the angel brings the spirit into you. Where does that say that in the Quran, Yahya? Where does the Quran say that? Again, you repeat it. Jabir is ruh al-Quddus. Maybe you didn't hear me. I'm going to repeat my challenge one more time, Yahya. Show me in the Quran where Gabriel Jibreel is said to be Ruh al-Quddus. He's not. He's different from Ruh al-Quddus. Moreover, you again said that Allah doesn't appear. He sends angels they create. Yeah, I don't think you understand what you're doing. By saying angels create, then you're saying there are others like Allah. But you just quoted the Quran saying nothing is like Allah, but you just refuted it. If the angels create life and the angels give you the spirit that makes you alive, then they are exactly like Allah because they create exactly like Allah. They are partners with Allah with Allah's permission. So what you're saying right now is Allah's the one who gave them the strength to be like him. So Allah's the one who committed shirk. So your God is a mushrik by allowing angels who are creatures to create exactly like him by sending angels to give life exactly like him. So he committed shirk. He's a mushrik because he made them exactly like him, even though they are not him. I don't know why you don't get this, why it's hard to see. You're destroying the Quran and you're destroying Tawheed and you're destroying uh, Rububiyyah and Uluhiyya. But again, hopefully by the grace of Jesus Christ, you understand the point that's being made. You then said, you said that... <clears throat> There is a difference between nafsi and ruh. And I don't know if you meant to say Allah doesn't have a nafs. I hope you didn't make that mistake. Because you and I both know, Yahya, yeah, and I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. You and I both know that Allah has a nafs. Surah Al-Maida, one of many places where Jesus says, you don't know what's in my nafsi, my soul. But I'm sorry, you know what's in my nafsi? My mistake. You know what's in my nafsi, Allah, but I don't know what's in your nafs. So Allah has a soul. 
So if you're saying that there's a difference between ruh and nafsi, well, what's the difference when Allah himself has a soul and the spirit comes from him, which you did not focus. So let me repeat this again, Yahya. Allah breathed out the spirit, meaning the spirit comes from him. And I think you're getting confused with Allah breathing the spirit into man to make him alive with our human spirit. Please don't make that confusion. Allah breathing his spirit into man is to make man alive and to give him a spirit. But Allah's spirit is not my human spirit. It's not your human spirit. My human spirit and your human spirit is created by the spirit of Allah. Because I said, and you didn't listen, Allah breathed out the spirit. That means the spirit is not part of creation. It comes from him. So yeah, yeah I want you to tell people that this that came out of Allah, the ruh that came out of Allah is created. Because if you say it's created, that means there was something in Allah created. Allah created a, a certain quality, a, one of the sifat that he, he possesses. He created it. And if you do, then that means you're a kafir. But then again, you said that the mother of the book is much more comprehensive than the Quran because it contains everything, the destiny and everything else. Whether it does or not, that's still not my point. So yeah, yeah, please understand my point. I want to try one more time. Since the Quran is kalam Allah, speech of Allah, then it's not created. And you said Allah didn't become a book, therefore the Quran is not Allah. So if the Quran is not created and it's not Allah, that's two uncreated realities that are not one. That means you destroyed Tawheed. Furthermore, even if the mother of the book, Umul Kitab, is more than the Quran, you're still left with the problem. The Quran is in it. It's the mother of the Quran. But if it's the mother, that means the Quran has a father. Because according to chapter 6, verse 101 of the Quran, Allah can't have a child unless he has a girlfriend. So that means the Quran's mother <laughs> can't have a child uh, uh, unless... What happened? He was talking over me. Repeat, repeat again. Okay. Re repeat again, please. Yeah, because he talked over me. So anyway, let me repeat the point. So if Allah cannot have a child, sex 101, because he has no girlfriend, then the mother of the Quran cannot have children unless it has a boyfriend or a husband. But then the verse says, the mother book is with us. So if the Quran is in the mother and the Quran is the word of Allah, that means Allah is the father of the Quran, the husband of the mother. So the Quran has a mommy Time. and has a daddy, Allah and his wife. Time. Nice one. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sam. Wonderful. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to go to the third round of, of rebuttals. And your five minutes, uh, Yakia, when you're ready, let me unmute you first of all. Uh, starts now. In Islam, it's 1017. No one who practiced deceit shall dwell in my house. And I don't deceive people. I'm telling Quran is the spoken word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is not a creation but it is it is the word of Allah the spoken word of Allah and second Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he spoke about himself what shall you expect him to say uh, that Jesus say you know what's in my uh, in my nafas and this is a spoken language and ta'ala ma fi nafsik Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only ruh because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is no one see and you talk about the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is eternal like him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he doesn't get uh, uh, the attribute after he do, does the creation, but he has the ad attribute even before the creation is. And you keep saying that the angel are uh, uh, creating a long, a long God. And I'm telling you again, all and the universe is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it all submit to his will and does his command with his permission. So it's not up to the angel to do anything and you said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathes out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathes out of his spirit that means he's not going to empty himself but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, blow his spirit for 
the human to become alive. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, the creation and to multiply by his permission, because some people, uh, they get married and they uh, sleep together, but they don't have children. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave who, whomever he will uh, children, he bestow on, on people. And this is by his permission, we, we are destined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, 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 the difference between, between soul and spirit, uh, the nafas is uh, compound of desire and is not ruh. The ruh is belongs to Almighty God, which we have life with it. But the nafas is what we wish and what we desire. And this is the difference between ruh and nafas. So ruh is uh, uh, coming from uh, uh, the Almighty God, and it's uh, uh, we don't know how it look like, and we don't know any shape for it because it is we call it an English spirit. But uh, this spirit is not the same uh, uh, spirit because we can say spirit is like desire, but the spirit is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, what can I say more? Uh, One minute and twenty seconds. Uh, 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 ask him if he uh, what his question. So if I I can uh, answer any question. We can we can move on to the questions uh, crossfire in the next round. So okay, we go one minute. So we have to stop there, Yahya. Yeah, yeah. I stop there. I stop there. Okay, cool. Don't forget. Sorry, sir, you want to make some comments on, on what you said? Yeah, or to, you have to well, yeah, remember, if he's going to get three or four, then I'll get the same amount. So this was his five minutes. Let me get another five minutes. Then we can go crossfire. Right? Can we do that? Ready? Yeah, cool. Okay, right. let's begin. Start my timer. Okay, uh, I, I really think Yahya is very confused because in one minute he was saying that the spirit is blown by Allah, the spirit belongs to Allah, and we have life with it. So I agree. Allah's spirit is blown by him. It comes out of him. And he says it's not created. The sifat are not created. And I said the spirit, if it comes out of, of Allah, it's not part of creation. It's part of him. It's not created. So it seems like he's agreeing. But then he says, no, we're given life with it. But then he seems to confuse it with his own human spirit. So I'm going to have to correct Yahya again. You are right that the spirit is blown out by Allah, breathed out by Allah. And therefore, it's not part of creation. But you are wrong in thinking that because the spirit is then blown into you and gives you life, that somehow your human spirit is the same as Allah's spirit. So if that's what you're thinking, you're wrong. What the Quran is doing is taking what the Bible says. <clears throat> when the Bible says that God breathed the breath of life into the first man, made him a living soul. What that means is God's spirit <clears throat> gives man that soul, that spirit that makes him alive and conscious and makes his body alive. So the Quran is agreeing with that. But who's doing it? The spirit. So your human spirit, your human soul is not the spirit of Allah that comes out of Allah. Your human spirit, your human soul, they are created by the spirit of Allah. So now we're back to point one. Since the spirit is breathed out by Allah, that means it's different from Allah. Since the spirit gives a life and creates like Allah, that means it's equal to Allah. Since the spirit can appear as a man and speak to Mary and say, I am only a messenger of your Lord to give you a son. He says, I will give you a son. Li'ahabba, which you didn't comment on. You just went to verses 20 to 21. But in chapter 19, verse 19 of the Quran, that phrase, Li'ahabba, I'll show you. It's used elsewhere in the Quran for Allah creating and giving life. The spirit says to Mary, I will give you a son, meaning I came to create that baby in your womb, showing the spirit is creator, life giver, not part of creation because he's part of Allah, comes out of Allah without separating from Allah, subject to Allah. So that's two. But then again, I love what you said. You again admit it. The Quran is not created. So, Yahya, I don't know why you don't understand the problem you have. If the Quran is not created, it is the... <clears throat> One of the sifat of Allah, the kalam of Allah, one of the attributes, the word speech of Allah. That means the Quran, if it's uncreated and it's not Allah, now you add another uncreated thing to your Islam. So let's count. Allah, His Spirit, Quran, that's three. So Allah is not one. He's not unique because the Quran is uncreated like Allah, even though it's not Allah. 
The spirit is uncreated like Allah, even though it's not Allah. And the spirit gives life like Allah, even though it's not Allah, creates like Allah, even though it's not Allah. So that's three, Yahya yeah, count, three, but you added the fourth. You said that the angels are created, but Allah sends them and gives them permission to give us our spirit, to breathe the spirit into us. So now you have a group of created angels that are being permitted by Allah to create like Allah and give life to Allah. That means Allah, according to you, is a mushrik. He committed shirk. I don't know if you understand, because what is shirk? When you ascribe a creature with Allah in his worship, in his lordship, or in his attributes, you just attribute angels to Allah in Allah's attributes, because if they create and give life, that means they are sharing in Allah's asma wa sifat, because one of the names of Allah is al-khalik, the creator. But then you just said angels with the permission of Allah create. So the al-khalik is creating angels to create like him, committing shirk. So now how many is that? Allah, the spirit, the Quran, and numerous angels. My goodness, it's not three, it's not four, it's probably millions. God only knows how many angels there are. You have millions of entities that are not the same, that are like Allah and do what Allah does. Some are created, others are not. Yeah, yeah, you are a mushrik. You are a kafir, ya akhi, my brother in humanity. And it's not your fault because your Quran is a book of misguidance, deception, that doesn't teach that God is one, that teaches the spirit is equal to God, that teaches that Jesus is equal to God, that teaches, not in the Quran, but in your sunnah, that the Quran, which is the revelation of Allah, is equal to Allah because it's uncreated even though it's not Allah. Give it up. Your deen is not from God. It is a satanic deception. Come to Jesus, your true God and Savior and Muhammad's judge. Give it up, Yahya. You're losing because you can't defend falsehood. The truth of Jesus will always triumph. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Sam. You got um, 10 seconds to spare. So let's pause there for a second. Thank you for that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we got about 700 people joining join the live chat, the live debate, which is awesome. Make sure you guys like like the video and share it. And thank you, thank you all for, for stopping by. So now, Yakia, your fourth round of rebuttals, which is gonna be five minutes again. Or is it the fifth? I thought start... it was the No, this is the fourth. Fourth okay. round of five minute rebuttals. All right, go ahead. Yakia, your, your five minutes starts uh, now, Yakia. First, I'm not a kafir or mushrik. I believe as the oneness of God. I worship only one God. I believe in only one God, his angel, his books, his messenger, the the day of a judgment, hell, hell fire and paradise and destiny. I believe like all the prophet and messenger who teach the Lord our God is one and this one is none like him. And Jesus is like any other prophet who was given authority and given permission to do what he does. And when you are uh, you are saying that uh, uh, you invite me to to Jesus to worship a man, uh, uh, I will later on uh, show you how your Bible degrade this Jesus. And uh, I hope that you respond to me. Now the human spirit is from God and is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, why I say that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he uh, uh, shaped Adam, uh, he didn't order the angel to prostrate for, for him. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create Adam, he command and order all the angel in heaven to prostrate uh, as a sign of obedience to Almighty God and appreciation to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created with his own hand. And uh, all the angels, as you know, they bow down on the floor as, as appreciation and obedience to Almighty God except shaitan who disobey and who promise God that he will mislead us into temptation and he will take us uh, to hellfire where we go going to burn. I am a Muslim and I am 
Quran, uh, you said Quran is attribute of Allah. Quran is not an attribute of Allah. It is revelation from Allah uh, according to the event and being revealed through angel Gabriel to Prophet Muhammad والسلام, and it's a unique book where you find a lot of miracles in the Quran uh, talk about a lot of different aspects of life and I can give you some uh, uh, some verses now which prove uh, about the origin of life uh, Quran 21 30 we made everything living from water uh, origin of ion Quran 57 25 the sky protection uh, sky uh, sun rotation uh, protective ceiling of, of earth Quran 21 32 uh, the mountain as pegs and roots which make uh, the earth doesn't shake uh, Quran 78 verse number 6 and 7 expansion of the universe and uh, Stephen Hopkins you can uh, Hawkins he can uh, they uh, Quran 51 47 uh, Sun orbit uh, and moon orbit 21 31 Quran the oceans uh, the neutral wave and the darkness and the seas and the internal wave Quran 24 verse number 40 uh, lion of movement the forehead when you lie it's not here is Quran 96 15 16 and pain reception for the skins uh, Quran ver uh, chapter 4 verse number 56 so be aware that what you're saying that the Quran is false and, uh, 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 and Prophet Muhammad is false. I will show you later on when we come to talk about the Bible, what, where, which, which book is false. As we can see that uh, the Quran glorify and uh, show so much respect to Jesus and mention him and as one of the mightiest, mightiest prophet while your Bible yes, degrade him as racist liar. Thank you, Yahya. Thank you for that. Cool. Let me reset the, the timer. Uh, may, and this may, will be your last. May, may I ask something? One second. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Cool. Let me let me let me do something here. Okay. Let me let me bring it back to to the format. Let one. me unmute Sam. One, one, one. Can I so, make count? Sam, this one. will be your fourth. Juan, please listen to me. Can you hear me, Juan? I don't want to talk over you. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me, Juan? Go ahead. Make sure you let Yahya know not to go off topic. It's not science in the Quran. He's humiliating himself. If you want to debate science in the Quran, I'll bury the Quran in its science. Make sure he stays on the topic. And then just that's what I want him to know. Let him know. You want to debate? Let's do it even tomorrow. Signs in the Quran. I'll bury his Quran in its gross scientific mistakes. Make sure he respects the rules and the proposition. It's Tawheed in the Quran, not science, and it's baloney in the Quran. Just make sure you hold them accountable. Okay? So I wanted to say yeah. that. So, cool. so that's, that's the reason why we, why we have this. Well, thank you for that, Sam. That's why, yeah. yeah, that's why this section, ladies and gentlemen, is, is to rebut. Yes. Um, to rebut the points, but obviously, Yahya, please make sure that you remain on topic so we don't deviate onto a different topic. Um, you know, right. Brother Sami is very open to do debates on any subject, uh, specifically when it comes to Islam. So let's not go and try to create another debate. So, okay. Brother Sam, your go five ahead. minutes of your fourth round of rebuttal right. before we move on to crossfire starts now. Okay, I'll start now. Uh, guys, notice how he had to bring up everything else but Tawheed because he knows he's getting embarrassed and his Quran is getting decimated. So he goes into science. And I'm going to challenge you. Bring up Jesus and the woman and the word dog. And watch. I'm going to use that against you and your prophet to prove your prophet is an antichrist. But again, I want to say now, you're not ignorant. You are lying, Yahya. And I don't make it want to make it personal. 
but you are lying because you know better. You said, and everyone heard it, it's recorded. Guys, did you hear? He said that the Quran is not one of Allah's sifat. It's the revelation of Allah. It's not an attribute of Allah. It's a revelation. He said that it's recorded. Now, Yahya, you know you're lying through your teeth. Here it is, the creed of Imam at tahawi translated by Hamza Yusuf. Imam at tahawi the creed of Imam at tahawi The Quran is the word of God that emanated from him without modality in its expression he sent it down to his messenger as a revelation so when it came down it was a revelation but it is the word of god that came from him and then it says unlike human speech it is eternal and uncreated now <clears throat> to quote other muslim sources see this is why i don't like to do these debates with you i don't want to educate you on your dean you should know what your dean is Instead of me correcting you, here it is again. This comes from one of your Salafi websites, Islam QA. The Quran, the word of Allah. It's not simply his revelation. It's his word, his kalam. Kalam Allah. And because it's his kalam, it is one of his attributes. And as his attributes, it is uncreated. Uncreated. And this one, by the way, that comes from Sunan Abu Dawood. I quoted from Sunan Abu Dawood. And again here... <clears throat> I debated Abu Hanifa for six months and then our view became united that the one who said the Quran is created is a kafir. The one who said the Quran is created is a kafir. Okay, so again, I can give you verse after verse after verse. And finally, the Quran is a speech of Allah. Hence, it is an attribute of Allah. Kitab Sha'ar as sunnah The Quran is a speech of Allah. Hence, it is an attribute of Allah. All of Allah's attributes have been with him eternally. Why did you lie to people, Yahya? Why did you lie and say it's not one of his sifat, it's his revelation? No, it's his sifat, his attribute speech, and it was revealed. Don't say it's not revealed, but it's more than a revelation. It's his attribute. So again, I'm going to have to say you lied, Yahya. You're not ignorant right now. Then again, you said, and astonishingly, I don't see how you're blind to what you said. Guys, did you hear that unlike Jesus, Allah commanded all the angels to prostrate to Adam. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 34. They perform sujood. Their word sujood, sajda, where we get masjid. He again destroyed Islam. He again destroyed the Quran. He again destroyed Allah and His Messenger. Because why is Allah commanding angels to perform sujood to a creation? To Adam, when sujood is supposed to be given only to Muslims. Now watch the tap dance and the reinterpretation. Oh, but sujood doesn't mean worship. Sujood means just to give obeisance, respect for Allah's sake. See, this is the beautiful religion of Islam. It's the religion of reinterpretation. Make the Quran fit anything you want it to fit. Because if you let the Quran speak, it buries your deen, destroys Muhammad, and shows Allah is a false god. But you're not going to get away with it, Yahya. Because I want you to admit to everyone the word sujood, from sajda is where you get masjid, mosque, and masjid is the place that you perform sujood, and it's supposed to be only for Allah. So thank you for proving that Allah commanded the angels to perform ubudiyah for Adam. But didn't you say tawhid al-ubudiyah, only Allah, Allah alone? No, it's Allah and Adam. But it gets worse for you. If you go to Surat al-Yusuf, Surat al-Yusuf, chapter 12, verse 4, and 100, Surat al-Yusuf, chapter 12, Verse 4 and 100, it says that the family of Yusuf did sujood, performed such that they bowed down and prostrated to Yusuf because that was Allah's will be ithni Allah. Oh my goodness, this book that's supposed to be Tawheed is full of shirk and it's full of idolatry and full of nonsense. Then again, you went back to the angels and Allah giving them permission and Allah giving Jesus permission. I don't know if I'm clear, yeah, yeah. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that I'm speaking too fast. So I'll slow it down. Do you understand, Yahya, yeah, that even when you say, be ithni Allah, by Allah's permission, that doesn't change the fact it is Allah who's permitting angels to give life, create, that it's Allah who's permitting Jesus to create from clay, breathe life into clay, make that clay alive, exactly the way Allah created Adam, even if you say it's by his permission, you're saying Allah is making Jesus and angels his partners. He's committing shirk. Allah Akbar.
time. Thank you for that, Sam. Okay, cool. Excellent. Let's take a little break there. And thanking the family who are always tuned in. Wonderful exchanges here, guys. Um, very fiery. Lots of content and lots of references to take on board. I hope the family is also finding it edifying. So now, just to remind our debaters and, and obviously the viewers, we're going to move on to what we call uh, crossfire rounds. Okay? okay, so we're going to have four minutes, sorry, four rounds or five minutes of crossfire question questions um, that you guys are going to be posing to each other. Uh, please keep it on topic, uh, Yahya and everybody else. And um, don't make, I would like you guys just to answer straight up. I don't want you to make arguments based on your uh, on, on your answer. Let, let's not create another 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 debate based on on your answer. I just wanna uh, quick fire answers from both sides. So we're gonna give you guys five minutes. I'm gonna mute you, Yahya. And um, so yeah, so this your first round, Yahya, of cross examination, cross examination questions. Okay. Uh, to Sam, we'll begin. Whenever you're ready. So your mic is unmute. I'm gonna mute myself and I, I want to take, us now. I want to take the opinion of Sam. I will uh, I will answer uh, uh, what he has just said, and then if you want, he can ask me, and I, I I can ask him, and we can just reply to each other. Uh, I would like. Uh, what do you think? Do you like uh, answer? Uh, questions and answer and answer the question after I I I just uh, uh, finish with this statement uh, about the last what he said. Uh, what is he saying? Wants another five minute response to me? Is no, no, you're... not five minutes. Not five minutes. I just what? want to uh, reply to you. Uh, then we can go for a question and answer. Right, right, uh, right. Let him go. Right. But he's okay. He's okay. Yeah, but you're not going to take five minutes to answer, right? No, no, no. I'm not going to take five minutes. All right, because I don't want to take five minutes, but go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, the spoken word, the spoken word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a creation. As when we say our word, our word is not us. Our word is the expression about what we are thinking about. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he uh, spoke his word, it is express what in Allah's mind and uh, this is you are confusing things and uh, this is uh, I don't agree with what uh, you're saying uh, I, d I don't myself you you give me I don't know uh, I really don't care about uh, names uh, and explanation because they are a human like me and you and it is their opinion and it's not a holy uh, I don't lie. Attribute is not word of God, but what God is as a creator. He is uh, has the attribute even before he create the creation. Uh, okay. Regarding prostrate, prostrate uh, all the prophet and messenger they prostrate as uh, to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and there's another kind of prostration as prostration of respect to show. Uh, somebody but we prostrate just for Allah and Allah the angels the angels they are not partner of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are servant of Allah and they obeyed the order uh, and they only worship Allah and they do what they being commanded and they show obedience to God as he create uh, uh, Adam, one question. Yeah, you're, you're now taking five minutes. No, no, yeah. I'm responding. I'm responding. I'm going to respond back to you. That's how it's going to work. Yeah, now yeah. Uh, but I, I, I will start the question. Allah is the giver of life, and uh, the angel, they are not by a servant of God, mm -hmm. and they do as everybody does with His permission. And uh, now, uh, uh, if one you want question. to, yeah, the question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, how many minutes did he take, uh, Juan, for supposedly he, answering briefly? How many minutes was that? Yeah, he took two minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, now give me two minutes and 30 seconds to respond. Okay, now, okay. Just Start again now. Said, he just again said, the Quran is a spoken word, and it's not Allah. He's still not getting it. You just made my proof again, my case for me. If it's the spoken word of Allah, it's not Allah, and it's uncreated, not created, then you have two uncreated things. You still don't get it? You just said... The spoken word of Allah. 
So if it's a spoken or volan, you said, just like your words are not you, the Quran is not Allah. But that was my argument. If it's not Allah and it's uncreated, that's two uncreated things. You still don't get it. And you told me you don't care what this guy says, this guy says. Who cares what you got to say? If you're going to say, I don't care what Hamza Yusuf says or Tahawi says, that's not an argument because you are Sunni. Ahl al Sunnah wa Jama, you are Salafi. If you're in Saudi Arabia and you were to say to the Sheikhs there, no, the Quran is not speech of Allah, they would beat you and put you in a coma worse than COVID 19. So don't play that game with me. Your position as a Sunni, you're not Quran only, you're not Qurani, and you're not Shia. You're Sunni, you're Salafi. As Sunni Salafi, your Aqidah is. The Quran, Kalam Allah, uncreated, it is the speech of Allah, one of his sifat. Don't play these games with me. Then again, you don't get it when I keep saying to you, I know angels are created. Angels are created. But you're making my case, Yahya. I don't know why you can't see it. May the Lord Jesus, by his spirit, open your blind eyes because you just admit angels who are created and servants, they are giving life. That means Allah is giving the ability, the quwa to creatures to give life. By giving them that ability, he's making them creators with him. He's committing shirk. Do you understand now the point? Yes, I know they're servants. Yes, I know they're created, but that's why it's shirk. Why is Allah sending an angel to create our spirit or breathe our spirit in our bodies to make us alive? When the Quran says Allah does that, this angel's a creature. For Allah to give him that ability, that means this angel is now Allah's partner in creating. You didn't refute it. And then the third thing you did, I, and I just I said you're going to do this, that when the angels bowed to Adam, it's worship, but you're going to explain it away. Yeah, it was bowing of, of respect, but we only bow to Allah. Okay, if it's only respect, why does your Sharia right now forbid you, forbid you from performing sujood to someone? Why? Because all sujood, all prostration is to Allah alone. So why did Allah change His mind? In the beginning, oh, it's okay. Hey, Malika, come bow to Adam. Do sujood. It's okay. Later on, I'm going to make it shirk. But for now, it's not shirk. Come on, Yahya. Don't give me these silly arguments. I've been there, done that. You're only embarrassing Islam. Argue better. Go ahead. Let's go to the Q&A. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, so who would like to start the Q&A, first of all? Up to him. It's up to him. Does he want you want to start the Q&A? The Q&A, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So we're going to move on to Q&A. So as I said before, um, I would like quick crossfire rounds, cross-examinations. And um, so your, first, your, your round of questioning, yeah, yeah, your five-minute round of questioning begins now. Ask Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, he's going to be asking you questions now. Uh, the question is not going to last for five minutes. The question is a question. Go ahead, ask, and I'll you, answer. We're going to go back. Yeah, you, go, okay, okay. You, you, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, you have five minutes to to question Sam yeah. okay, on this okay. topic. Uh, Why he doesn't believe in this? Okay, okay. Uh, as, long, as long as you believe that the Quran is false and Prophet Muhammad is false, mm -hmm. and you claim the Bible is a holy book, mm -hmm. according to you, mm -hmm. how can I trust the Bible where it say in Genesis 1, 3, 1, chapter 1, 31, God saw that all what he's made, that uh, uh, God was uh, very, like satisfied with what he created, while in Genesis verse uh, chapter 6, verse number 8, uh, God was grieved that he had made man on earth and his heart has filled with pain and he want to wipe mankind. Okay. So how, how, yeah, answer, okay. answer, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you said you're not a liar and deceiver, you're honest. Is the debate, what does the Quran say about the Bible? And is the Bible the word of God? Or is the debate, does the Quran teach Tawheed and the Bible teach Trinity? When you change the topic, you're embarrassing yourself and your prophet because you see, show people you got buried in Tawheed, so you have to change the topic. Why are you embarrassing yourself? Can you stay on the topic? I will debate you on what does Muhammad believe about the Bible? Do you take me up on that challenge? Did the Bible think Genesis was corrupt or not? Why are you changing the topic and embarrassing yourself? Because I told you I'm going to embarrass you when you do these debate tactics with me. On topic, so stay please. to the topic. Ask me a question about the topic before I embarrass you even more. Okay. Can, can, can you prove? Can you prove out of your Bible uh, the oneness of God? 
according to your Bible? When we get to the Bible and the Trinity, that's the second part of this debate. We're on Tawheed and Quran, right? Right after this, we're going to do Trinity in the Bible. We didn't finish uh, uh, with Tawheed. I already said what I have to say. And now, uh, starting right, question, right. and I want to uh, wider uh, uh, the conversation because uh, uh, the Quran, I'm, I'm asking a question. Uh, wh why now uh, you just want to stay with Tawheed? <laughs> as long as long as long as this is uh, this Sam, part of the Sam, debate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sam, First section of the uh, debate uh, Sam, yeah, about. But, 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 I can do that debate. as well. Please do it. Sam, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam. Uh, as you said, as you said, you believe that the Quran and Prophet Muhammad yeah. and Allah is false. Yep. And now I'm asking you to enlighten me yeah. with your Bible, sure. and we will. We, I will talk about the Quran, and but because I don't have a yeah, question yeah, about uh, about my my Quran, I don't doubt my Quran. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Do you understand? Right after this, we're going to do Bible and the Trinity, where you can ask me about the Bible and Trinity. Right after this, we got another debate. We're not yeah. done. Bible and Trinity. Do you understand that or no? I, I understand. Okay, I so understand that Quran and Tawheed, then we can go to Bible. Yeah. Uh, the, the, Tawheed and Quran, it was the idea that he wants to uh, discuss it, but I want to speak about the divinity of Christ. Yeah, I want to talk right about the Bible, and I don't have anything to ask about. Okay, then let me ask you about Tawheed. I have you ask me, okay. you ask me, you ask. Okay, okay, thank all you, right. thank you, Jacob, for your honesty. Go ahead, Dayasa. Okay, all right. I'll give you, I'll give you yeah. And then after this, you. Bible and Trinity. Just hold on, brother. Okay, now, uh, yeah, yeah. Show me where the Quran says. Show me where the Quran ends. And now listen to my question carefully. Yeah. Show me where the Quran says Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. Uh, I guess uh, it's a Surah Maryam. We send our spirit in the shape of man and he uh, he he became like a shape of man and he spoke to her as I mentioned to you before and this is my reply there's no none of the mankind are will be in direct contact with yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will send angel and even uh, uh, we we all know that angel Gabriel is the one who is re responsible uh, mediator between Almighty God and all his prophets yeah, yeah. and messenger. Yeah, I don't want you to eat up my five minutes. That doesn't say Gabriel. It says he sent to her our spirit. So I'm going to ask the question again. Show me a verse in the Quran where it says Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. Don't tell me what you think, how you want to interpret it. Show me where the Quran says Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. And okay. I'll show you he's not the Holy Spirit. I'll show okay. you the Okay, I decline. I cannot show you. Okay, good. That's honest. Uh, at, at, at least, at least now, because uh, it doesn't come to my mind any verse about uh, uh, Angel Gabriel. Okay, now. Okay, let, let him question the next question. Yeah, I'm asking because he doesn't want to ask, so I'm going to ask him now, right? Yeah, ask, ask. Okay, now, now show me in the Quran where someone other than Allah and Jesus, someone other than Allah, Jesus, create from clay. And breathe into that clay and make it alive other than Allah and Jesus I confirm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create create and he give the authority and permission for Jesus, for Jesus to be able to do the same as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does as a sign to the people yeah, yeah, of Israel yeah, yeah. That's the question. I know yeah, the yeah. question I know the question I'm confirming that I agree with you that Jesus is the only one in the Quran who was given the permission by God to create as a sign that he is a prophet okay, to now, the Lordship of Israel. Good. And third question. Okay. And, and I'll show you it's not just Bani Israel from the Bible and the Quran and when we debate. Hold on. Third Fair question. Uh, since Allah breathed his spirit into Adam to make him alive, what did Jesus breathe? What was coming out of Jesus' holy mouth? Because it said he created from clay a bird, breathed into it. What did he breathe into that bird to make it alive? What came out of him? Okay. My, my answer, uh, and uh, bear with me. Uh, 
the spirit, the spirit, the life, which is come essentially from the source of all uh, the ever living God who give uh, 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 the spirit of life. Uh, Jesus has it because he is. Has it? He, he has it because Amen. as we we have it, all, all we are. But we cannot create because we don't have permission. But Jesus has the permission of Almighty God as a sign of the lordship of Israel. Okay, I just want to yeah. And you keep saying lordship of Israel. I'll show you from your Quran. It's more than lordship. And we'll go to Matthew 15, 24 in our debate. I'm waiting for you to bring up Matthew 15, 24. What I'm going to do to you, I'm going to make you halal. But listen to this. Listen, Listen, you just admit to everyone, you just admit to everyone, Jesus was able to breathe that life from the spirit that Allah is the source of. So good, that's all I want. I want people to hear this. Now, another question for you, and I want you to answer this question from the Quran. <clears throat> Show me someone other than Allah and Jesus that gave life to the dead. From the Quran, someone other than Allah and Jesus that gave life to the dead. No one, no one, according to my knowledge, has given, has given uh, life to the dead. But uh, still, still, yes. uh, Jesus does what the Father, as you call him, Beautiful. allowed him to do and permit him to do. Okay, so and he is uh, a slave, yeah, servant. The question. Okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sam, you got 30 seconds. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Can you, are you saying that the Bible is right, that the father is Jesus' father when the Quran says Allah is not the father of Jesus, Jesus is not his son. So you agree with the Bible? It's uh, as a God is the creator, and but I don't agree that uh, no. he is the son. Okay, son, good. sons, okay. sons okay. of God, sons of God, that mean uh, the people who, uh, obey, obey, obey by God commandment and uh, the peacemaker according to Matthew they called sons of God sure. but God he yeah. have no son because uh, we are all his that? creation okay, let me ask you a final question okay, thank you. Before, okay. before you're done okay yeah. you just admit in my Bible God has children he's their father but how come your prophet didn't know that because your prophet said Allah is a father to no one no one is the son not even the Jews and Christians so are you saying that your prophet didn't know what you know, that we can be children of God because God is our creator because your prophet said, no, you're just a slave of Allah. So are you smarter than your prophet in the Quran? I'm not I'm not smarter than anyone, but the, our prophet, when he spoke, uh, it, it might it might be this fake hadith, but uh, the Quran say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, create. And uh, we don't say that we are the son of God as as you, you and the Jew, they say, you say that we are the son of God, but we are the creation of God, and whoever abide by his commandment, uh, they call the sons of God, but they are an, an uh, express, expression term, not a physical term, but in spirit. You agree with me or not? No, uh, I, here's the thing. Okay, let me answer your question. Because let me, let me answer, because my, yeah. time, my time. You and me both agree, spiritually we are children of God, but your prophet disagreed. So by you agreeing with me, you disagree with Muhammad. You just said Muhammad is wrong, so why do you still follow him? So yes, I agree with you. We are the children of God, spiritually, because he gives us life. But your prophet said, no, you are not a son of God, even if he's your creator, you're a slave of God. So you and I agree against Muhammad. So you are with me, taking my side against Muhammad. Why did you just condemn Muhammad? Uh, the prophet Muhammad uh, spoke, what being inspired to him as Quran. Okay. When when you're caught in hadith, maybe uh, I don't believe a hadith, but uh, as hadith I said, uh, I, uh, give me the verse of the Quran which says chapter that... Chapter 5 or 17 of the Quran, write it down, Yahya. Right. Chapter five. I'm giving it to you, listen to me. Chapter. Let me finish. Yeah, chapter finish. 5, so you're cutting me off again. Here, I'm going to wait for you to stop, Yalla. Okay, can I give the verses now? Sam, before you give the verse, let me yeah. let me let me let me uh, ask something um, because obviously I don't know whether Yahya would like to use his five minutes to question uh, Sam. Yeah, he said he has no questions until he. he has so no questions. So, so my so my question is: Would you like to use another five minutes to interrogate him before you yeah, go you want to? to? What, what, what would you like, Sam? Oh, Yahya, are you okay with him? You want to... 
if he wants to ask me questions, let him ask me questions. But he said he has no questions on Tawheed, so we'll go to Bible training. It's up to him. But let yeah. me give him the verses where the Quran says, okay. Allah is a father to no one, and, and he has no son, and we're all his slaves. So I gave him chapter 5. Write this down, Yahya. Don't interrupt me. Just write it down. 517, where it says, we are unbelievers who say Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary. Right after that, in 518. Chapter 5, verse 18, it says, The Jews and the Christians say, We are the sons of Allah, his beloved. You'll see what Muhammad said. No, you're not. Chapter 9, verse 30, the Quran. Write these down. Yeah, yeah. Write these down. Chapter 9, verse 30, there it says that the Jews say, Uzayah, Azra is the son of Allah. Nasara say, Messiah is the son of Allah. And then you see what it says there. They're, they're imitating unbelievers of Allah, of, of old. Allah punished them. But here are the ones that are most important for you. In chapter 19 of the Quran, chapter 19, Surah Al Maryam, 88 to 93, 88 to 93, there it says, All you are is a slave to Allah. None come unto him, to him except as slaves. Allah is only a master. You are his slaves. You are not his son. He's not your father. Now, why is that important, Yahya? Because in 518, when the Jews told Muhammad, 518, when the Jews told Muhammad, We are the sons of Allah, they meant it spiritually. That Allah created us, chose us, and gives us life. We are his covenant people. And Muhammad said, no, you're not. You're just creatures that he made. So your prophet doesn't agree with you and me. That Allah can be my spiritual father who gives me life, creates me, sustains me. Not my father sexually where he has sex. Muhammad said, no, even that sense he's not a father. But you said you agree with me. That means you disagree with Muhammad. Muhammad's wrong. You condemn Muhammad. Why are you still a Muslim? Okay. Great, right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, you want to this, address that? Uh, let me. Uh, this... Yakia. Yeah, yeah. Are we ready? Okay, for cool. Let's let's, let's 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 pause now for a bit. Let's pause. Let's pause now for a second. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, it would appear that you guys don't want to go, um, carry on with the interroga interroga interrogation section. Okay. So, we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna. Uh, we're going to move on to the second debate, which is, does the Bible teach us the Trinity and the deity of Christ? So for this one, I would like a 10-minute ten, ten introduction, opening statement from, from Sam first, and then Yahya. And once again, we move on to, we move on to, sorry, 50 minutes, sorry, 50 minutes um, opening statement from, from Sam first, and then um, Yahya will... Uh, We'll, we'll um, tag on we'll and then we'll one for four, four rounds of of rebuttals and again four rounds of uh, uh, Q and I'm sure um, Yaka will have more questions for for Sam in this round. So, brother Sam, let me and do me a favor, one down when I'm uh, call me, call me, call, call me JC, uh, Sam. Okay, call, call, me, call me JC. I can't hear you. What? Call me JC. Call me JC. Okay, JC. I'm sorry, brother. I I didn't know. Because I'm just meeting you for the first time. God bless you. Let me know when I'm down to two minutes. Say two minutes. Cool. I will do that. I like when you say cool. 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 I like that, man. Cool. Uh, okay, time. So your 50 minute opening statement begins okay. now. Okay. May the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, be glorified. May He fill me with the Spirit and give me the health I need to glorify Him in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to prove that Jesus claims to be God in the flesh, even though he's not the Father. This is why I'm a Trinitarian. He's not the Father. He's not the Holy Spirit. How? Because Jesus claims the very names and abilities that even Yahya's Quran says belongs only to Allah. Now, he believes in the Quran. I don't. So when I show him that Jesus claims one of the names of Allah, he's going to have to say, yes, your Bible does have Jesus claiming to be God, but I reject your Bible. That he can say, but he cannot deny Jesus claimed to be God. Because I'm going to show from Tawheed al-Asma wa Safat and Tawheed al-Rububiyah and Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, those categories that Yahya mentioned, Jesus claims the worship of God, the names of God, the qualities of God, as well as <clears throat> the <clears throat> sovereign authority of God. Beginning with first and the last. Chapter 57, verse 3 of the Quran. It says, Allah is the first and last. He's the first and the last. <clears throat> He's al awwal wal akhir, first and the last. Yahya agrees. Only Allah can say that. Revelation 1, 17 to 18. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though I were dead. Then he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives, though I was dead. Look, I am alive forevermore. So Jesus, who lives, who died, 
came to life, says, I am the first and last. According to his Quran, only God can claim that. Another <clears throat> function or characteristic that even the Quran says belongs only to God. The truth, al-haq, the life and the resurrection. The truth, the life and the resurrection. What does the Quran say? Who is the truth? Who is the life? Who is the resurrection? Now again, don't forget, I'm only quoting the Quran to show him that the Quran agrees these are things that can only be said of God, not that Allah is God. So here, chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. Chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. That is because Allah, he is the truth, al-haq, and brings the dead to life. So he's the life giver, the life, <clears throat> and has power over everything. Because the hour is coming, remember this, Yahya, the hour is coming, no doubt of it, Allah shall raise whoever is in the tombs. So Allah's the truth. He gives life to the dead, and he will raise them from the tombs at the hour. You mentioned John 5.19, which why I was astonished, but you don't understand John 5.19, because now I'm going to show you who Jesus claims to be, Yahya. So pay attention. Because in a cross-examination, I'm going to be asking you these questions. For as the Father raises the dead, the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. Like the Father... Jesus can do what the Father does, give life. No creature can say that. But then it gets better for Yahya, or worse. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming. Do you remember that, Yahya? That was in your Quran, Surah Al-Hajj. The hour is coming, and Jesus, Jesus speaking. And is now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. The dead will hear the voice of the Son of God at that hour, and they will live. Oh my goodness, Jesus but Yahya wants to prove to me from John, you're not God, you're a creature. Why do you say that at that hour, you will raise the dead and you will give them life by the power of your voice? My goodness, Jesus, I thought you were Muslim, alayhi salam. But then it gets worse for Yahya. For as the father has life in himself, so he's given the son to have life in himself. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in their graves, hour is coming in their graves, in their tombs, that's Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 7, in their graves, in their tombs, will hear his voice, the voice of the Son of God, and come out. So I want you to remember this. Jesus says, at the hour, those in the graves will come out when they hear my voice. But the Quran says that's what God does, and only God does, and he thinks Allah is God. So Jesus just claimed what the Quran says only God can claim. But it gets even better. John 6, 39 to 40. <clears throat> John 6, 39 to 40. I will raise them up at the last day. Yom al qiyamah Jesus says, I will raise them up. Believers, the mu'minun, I will raise them up. Again, he says, and I will raise them up at the last day. John 6, 39 to 40. Then he says, I've come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. And then again, John 6, 44 and 54. And I will raise him up on the last day. I will raise him up. On the last day. Wait, Jesus. On the last day, at that hour, the Quran says, Allah will raise the believers and everyone in their graves. You, Jesus, saying you're the son of God who will raise believers and raise all the dead from their graves at the last day, at that hour, by your voice? But Yahya wants to convince me that you never claimed to be God. Tawheed al John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, al-haq, and the life. Al-Masihu Akbar. Alhamdul Masih. Jesus claims what even the Quran says, only God can claim. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But it's going to get a lot worse for my friend Yahya. <clears throat> Quran says that another one of the names of Allah, another one of the names of Allah is that he is a nur. He is the light, the light. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. Chapter 24, verse 35 of the Quran. Oh, but Yahya, Jesus is supposed to be a Muslim like you. In John 8, 12 says, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Oh, but wait, Jesus, Allah is the Anur of the heavens and the earth. That's one of the names of Allah. How can you claim to be the light of the world? And don't forget, Yahya, you know what I believe. Jesus also became a man. He's God who's man. And as a man, he ate, he drank, he slept. So please don't embarrass yourself by quoting verses where Jesus as a man experienced human limitations. We're going to have fun. John 9, <clears throat> verses 4 and 5. I must do the works. John 9, verses 4 to 5. I must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And nur, I am the light. Another aspect, characteristic of Allah, of God. 
<clears throat> God knows the hearts of everyone and forgives sins. Chapter 3, verse 29. Chapter 3, verse 29. <clears throat> Say, whether you hide what is in your hearts or publish it, God knows it. God knows what is in the heavens and the earth, and God has power of all things. Chapter 3, verse 135. Pray for forgiveness for their sins. Chapter 3, verse 35, 135. 135. Who shall forgive sins but God? So again, the Quran agrees, only God forgives sins, and he knows what's in your hearts. Oh, but in Mark chapter 2, verses 5 to 12, Jesus seeing the paralytic, he says, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes were sitting there reasoning in their hearts. They were thinking in their hearts. Why did this man speak such blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Just like the Quran says, the Jews agree with Muhammad. Only God can forgive sins. Immediately, Jesus perceived in the spirit, immediately, that this is what they were reasoning in themselves. So he said to them, why do you think such things in your hearts? Wow, Jesus, you forgive sins and you know what's in the hearts of people? You know what's in the hearts of people and you forgive sins? But the Quran says only Allah can and you're supposedly a messenger of Allah, no more, no less. Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk, but that you may know... That the Son of Man, you may know, I, the Son of Man, have power to forgive sins on earth. He said to the par paralytic, I say to you, rise, get up, and walk. And he walked immediately. So Jesus did a miracle to prove that he has the power to forgive sins and know what people are thinking in their hearts. But wait, only God knows what people think in their hearts. And he alone forgives sins. And yet Jesus says, I know what's in your hearts, and I have the power to forgive sins. And I'll prove it by doing something Muhammad never could do. I'll do a miracle. Even worse for Yahya, one of the names of Allah in the Quran, one of the names of Allah in the Quran is Al-Warith, the heir, the heir, the inheritor, which also begs the question, who is Allah inheriting from? Chapter 15, verse 23, it is we who give life. Jesus says, I give life and make to die. And it is we who are the inheritors. Allah says, I inherit. I am the heir. Allah, what do you inherit and who do you inherit from? Chapter 19, verse 80. <clears throat> and we shall inherit from him, from that creature. I will inherit from him with what he says, and he shall come to us. Oh, my goodness. Allah inherits from creatures? Allah, I thought he's al-ghani. He's all rich. Why is he taking inheritance from his creatures? Are you that poor? You need the inheritance, the possession of your creatures? But then even worse for Yahya, 2189. 2189. And Zechariah, when he called unto his Lord, Oh, my Lord, leave me not sol solitary. Though you are the best of inheritors, oh my goodness. Christians, listen to that. Zechariah says, you, Allah, are the best of those inherit. So Allah is part of a group. Everyone in the group receives an inheritance, but he happens to be the best of them. How can Allah inherit anything? But you know what? If you're a Trinitarian, then it makes sense. Because Jesus, speaking of himself in a parable, having yet his one beloved son, one son whom he loves, he sent him last to them saying, they will revere my son, but those vine dressers said among themselves, this is the heir. Wait, God's son, whom he loves, Jesus, he is the heir. And this is Jesus talking. I am the heir, al -warith. Now, John 16, 15. Jesus says, all that the father has is mine. Guys, notice what Jesus said. He's my father. Everything you know owns belongs to me. That means Jesus owns Yahya. Jesus owns Yahya's wife. Jesus owns Yahya's children. Jesus owns Muslims. He owns me. He owns Muhammad. And Muhammad is under his feet. Why? Because he says, everything the father owns, I own. The father owns all creation. Jesus says, all creation is mine. Yahya, your life is mine. Your wife is mine. Your bank account is mine. Your children is mine. And your prophet Muhammad is mine. Because I own everything that belongs to my father. I want him now to convince me. No, no, Jesus didn't claim to be God. No, no. Ah. All right. Chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. <clears throat> Chapter 2, verse 210. As the Holy Spirit gives me life and life to my throat to glorify Christ. The Quran agrees. Allah rides the clouds. He rides the clouds with angels. Chapter 2, verse 210. What do they look for but that God shall come to them in the cloud? Allah comes in the cloud, shadows, and the angels. So the angels will come with him. Oh, but yeah, yeah, Jesus says he's the one who comes in the cloud with the angels. Matthew 24, 30 to 31. They will see the Son of Man, me, coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels. So, yeah, yeah, please explain to me why Jesus in Matthew says 
that he is the one who rides the clouds. The angels belong to him and he will send them out. When your Quran, chapter 2, verse 210 says, Allah comes on the clouds with the angels. Who does Jesus think he is? Who does Jesus think he is? Now, this hadith, I'm going to leave it for the cross-examination because this one's going to be a nightmare for you and your religion. But I'm going to save it. I'm going to surprise you, Yahya. Surprise. Now, how much time I got, JC? If I have a couple of minutes, I can talk about the Holy Spirit. Do I have a couple of minutes? So I can talk about the Holy Spirit or am I down on time? Three minutes. Okay, good. Give me just about some extra, extra seconds for, for that. Now, what about the Holy Spirit? Because we're talking about the Trinity. The Holy Spirit, according to the Bible, especially the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is creator. The Holy Spirit is life giver. The Holy Spirit is maker. The Holy Spirit belongs to God, is sent out by God. And the Holy Spirit has emotions. And the Holy Spirit is almighty, all-knowing. All from the Bible, especially the Old Testament. So the Holy Spirit, who's not the same as God or Jesus, still nonetheless is one with the Father and Jesus because all three are the one God. Here, in the three minutes that I have. Job 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me. The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty has given me life. Psalm 104, verse 30. Psalm 104, verse 30. When you send forth your spirit, God, when you send you forth your spirit, you recreate them. You resurrect the dead. You send the spirit and he resurrects the dead and you renew the surface of the earth when you send the spirit to do that. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Wherever you go, the spirit is present. <clears throat> Psalm 139, 7 to 12. Where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? Psalm 139, 7 to 12. Wherever I go, your spirit is there. If I go to heaven, he's there. If I go to the depths, he's there. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Isaiah 40, verses 13 and 14. The Holy Spirit is omniscient, beyond comprehension. Isaiah 40, verses 13 and 14. Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord or as his counselor taught him? Who can teach the Spirit of the Lord? With whom did he take counsel? Who instructed him? Who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge? Showed him the way of understanding? No one, because the Holy Spirit is all-knowing. All wise and has all understanding. So no one can teach him and instruct him. He teaches everyone. So Holy Spirit is omniscient, omnipresent, creator, life giver. But there's more. Ezekiel 37, 12 to 14. Prophesy, son of man. I will bring them out of their graves. I will open their graves. Oh, my people, bring them out of their graves. And I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. Oh, my goodness. The Holy Spirit will resurrect the dead, give life to the dead, bring them out of their graves, just like Jesus will. So the Spirit is creator, life giver, maker, almighty, all-knowing, present everywhere. And he resurrects the dead, and he can be grieved, and he can be spoken to. My time is up. The true God that is one is triune. He's not the God of Muhammad or Yahya. He's the true God revealed in the Bible, revealed in Jesus. Time for you to give up on your prophet Muhammad and say bye-bye to him. And come to, to true Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge. Go ahead. Thank you, Sam. Um, thank you for that opening statement. Let me just unmute um, our guest, uh, Yahya. And also like to give thanks to everybody that's tuning in. Apologies for the, for the uh, disruptions at the moment. The cat. Let's we're gonna get this okay. Cool. So your 15 minutes, Yahya, begins uh, your opening statement. On whether I want, I want to ask uh, some questions. No, 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 I get no, 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 question, no, no questions uh, at this stage because we we, we okay. obviously want to keep the format. Explain, I yeah. just want him to explain just one thing to me. Okay. In your crossfire, uh, you can. Willing, okay. He is willing to answer me because I I after I want to do my statement. I want to understand something. Yeah. Okay. One. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Before before we begin your opening statement, go ahead. What's the question? Uh, is there one God or there's two gods? There's Father God and there is Son God. Okay, so you want to you want me to explain okay. it with uh, without explain you? It. Explain it to me. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there two God or one? Okay. We got the question. We got the question. Okay. When you say there's one God, my my question, my answer is: When you say God is one, one what? In what way is He one? So don't play that game with me because you can have God being one in one way more than one in another way. For example, if I say one family, what does that mean, one family? Only one person, one nation. If I say one car, even your car, that's one, has four doors or two doors and four wheels. So when you say God is one, one what? In what way is he one? 
And this is what you don't understand because you keep following Muhammad. Even as a Muslim, you believe when you say Allah is one, Wahid, you still believe he has many names and attributes. So right there, you don't believe Allah is one in the sense he has only one name or attribute. So what do you mean by one? So I can answer you properly. What do you mean by one? I mean one divine creator, one divine creator. Is there father divine or son divine? Is there two God or one God? Yeah, this right. is what Just I'm make talking your about. Because you're not going to understand the point. Because even the way you've made the question, asked me the question, shows you still don't understand. And you don't or, you are or you are purposely no understanding this, Yahya. Yeah, so okay. I don't know what's going on. Can you okay. explain to me? Is if Jesus is the only God? When you say he's the only God, you mean the only person who's God, or is yes. he the only true God with the Father and the Spirit? The only true God with, with the, the Father, Father and the Spirit, with the Father and Spirit. How exactly. many are there? The, Jesus is the eternal word of the Father who became flesh. And the spirit is the eternal spirit of God. So you can't separate the word and the spirit from God. The word and spirit eternally exist with God. So God, the father, Jesus, the word, his son, and the spirit. And that's the one God, which is what I was trying to show you from your Quran. Allah, Quran, and spirit, but you didn't get it. So I'm, I'm afraid you're not going to understand. This is, And again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I think this is a little bit too much for you. You're not getting it. But you hopefully you got my answer. Uh what I got, I got more confusion because now you're That's talking okay. about the Jesus the as the word of God. Jesus yeah. is the word of God, but there's the Holy Spirit okay. and there's Father. Yeah. So there are three, three and one. Okay. Yes. Okay. The three and so, one. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. This okay. is what I want to, to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Don't distort what I believe because you're going to get embarrassed. No, no, nice no, no, no. I, 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 I would you. like to be. I would like to be embarrassed. I will, no, I'm I ready to be humiliated. No, I don't. I would like. I would, I would like. I would like to say. I would. Okay. I would like to say yeah. that yeah, yeah. the father, the father is not the son, and the son is not the father. So we have two divine, uh, yeah. two or three Quran. divine. Well, let me make it. Allah is not the Quran, and Allah is not the Spirit. So we have three divines: Allah, the Quran, and Spirit. See, I can play that game with you. Allah is not the Quran. The Quran is not the spirit. The spirit is not Allah. So one, two, three. You have three gods, three divines. See, yeah, yeah. I told you I'm going to embarrass you. So let's not go there. Just make your case so I can refute you. Begin. Yeah, make, make your case, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so your opening statement on where the, the Bible okay. teaches uh, the Trinity and the deity of Christ. So your 15 minutes starts now, yeah, yeah. On top as long please. as you believe that God bring another God and he sent him to die for for to satisfy god so how can i trust such god and you're talking about a father and have a son two god will be seated side by side father as a god jesus as another god and the holy spirit another god as you admit the three and one discounted discounted on sale god who you, you cannot trust because according to john god the father he is but a tyrant killer who sent and forsake and betrayed the son to die on the cross to use his blood to forgive us and you're talking at the same time about jesus as he is god so let's apply apply your your Bible about Jesus as God. Let's see see what Jesus say about himself. Jesus always confess he is just a prophet sent by God, sent by God. So if he is God, he wouldn't sent by somebody else. So he must be not God, Matthew, 21, 10, 11. Jesus referred to, say, to himself as a servant of God. And Matthew 10, 24, 24, 45, chapter 12, and in John 13, 16. Jesus referred to himself as a prophet, not as God, as you claim. Matthew chapter 8 verse 20 
chapter 13, verse 16, chapter 21, verse 11, and Mark, chapter 6, verse 15, chapter 6, verse 4, chapter 9, verse 37, Luke 7, chapter 7, verse 16, 9, verse number 8, 9, verse number 19, as well as refer to himself as a prophet, and John 13, 17, chapter 7 and 16, verse 16, chapter 6, 14, and chapter 7, verse 40. Refer to himself not as a God or son of God. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 9, chapter 17, verse 22, chapter 8, verse 20, chapter 18, verse 11, as well as refer to himself as the son of man, chapter 26, verse 2, and Luke chapter 9, verse 22, and in John chapter 5, verse 27, refer to himself as a slave. How can be he is a slave to his father? He didn't say, I am a son of God, but I am a servant, prophet, son of man, and slave. As a slave, John 13, 16, and Matthew 10, 24. And Jesus he told us who is the only true God according to John 17, 3. Who, who, that the only true God who sent Jesus Christ to the lost sheep of Israel. And let me remind you that Jesus said, I've been sent, I have been sent to the lost sheep of Israel only. And he commanded his apostle not to go among the Gentiles or Smartian, rather going just to the she lost sheep of Israel only. Just after the resurrection, according to you, after he preached for three years, he sent, he told his apostle, go to the all nation. So during his ministry, which lasted three years, he didn't bother to uh, preach preach for the Gentiles, and actually he referred to Gentiles as dogs, swine, uh, slave, and pigs, and slave to the children as Jesus, which you claim he is God, he is God, a racist God, because he called the children, the Jew children, and he called the Gentiles and Smartian, a slave, and they, he looked down on the Jew, uh, on uh, the non-Jew. Uh, let me come back. Jesus, Jesus, peace upon him, according to your Bible, referred to himself as a student, because he didn't know anything, and if he is God, he doesn't know the hour, nor the angel. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Only the Father knows the hour. Jesus have no knowledge. And if he is God, he should have known the hour. And when you said about the inheritor, actually God is the creator who bring all the universe to creation and he will inherit everything as everything will, will overcome by death but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be overcome by death because he is the eternal ever living. While Jesus, according to you, he gave up his spirit on the cross while he shout to his father, why you have forsaken me? My God, my God, why you forsaken me? Or you forget this, that means uh, he is accusing the father of betraying him and forsaking him to die a humiliating death on, on the cross. And Jesus himself teach, seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open. Ask, and you will be forgi uh, for, uh, given. But when he 
dig his head three times, asking the, his father to save him from death. The father turned blind, turned deaf, and he didn't give him. That means all his teaching were false teaching. And the father, according to you, cannot be trusted because he is only interested in blood for forgiveness. Because if you don't pay him and bribe him with the blood, you have no forgiveness. And you are worshiping the false God, Jesus, who is worshiper of the true God, the father. And shame on you, Mr. Sam, because according to, to one, one Sam, uh, 15 3 your your the father is a killer father who command his people to go and dash little baby against the rock he order uh, uh, he order killing innocent baby innocent rip up open women uh, pregnant women and kill even animals even uh, 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 donkeys and what was uh, what was according to one Sam fifteen three? What was uh, the crime of the children or the baby or the animal that, that your God are commanding his his servant to to go and kill? Your God is a particular, and he if he is a, a tyrant killer who is a traitor to his own son. Let me come back to to. Jesus to to whom he ascend, he ascend uh, to God, and Jesus teach uh, God the the God is unseen and live live art and heaven not on earth. So Jesus, when we, he was on, on earth, he never was a God because because God cannot be humiliated on the cross and uh, half naked uh, and be cursed. And John 20, John chapter 20, 17, Jesus, he did not know his own doctrine. John 7, 16, Jesus can do nothing by himself. John 5, 19, John 5, 5, 30. So a man can do nothing of, of himself. And every time he performed, he performed, he go open his, his arm and he thanks the father who give him the authority and the permission to perform. And you are telling, telling me that he is equal to God while Jesus telling you the father is a greater than the son, a greater than all. Shame on you and shame on your Bible. I have some more. Let me remind you, let, let me remind you uh, what, how much uh, time left? Four minutes. Four minutes. Let me tell you about God. Uh, first, Jesus warned his follower in Mark 13, 5, 6, that, that many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. That means he is not he. He is Christ only. Uh, Jesus, or the Bible teach that God doesn't change his nature because he stay immortal, invisible, eternal, and there's no one like him of he among his creation. God doesn't change his nature. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. God is the living and everlasting. Habakkuk, Habakkuk 1, 12. God remain the same in nature. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 12. God is everlasting. He will not grow tired or weary. Jesus grew from a baby to a young man to, to 33 years old, and he used to be uh, uh, weary, and he cursed uh, the, the fig tree when, when he it didn't give him a tree because it didn't give him fig and fruit, and he cursed it. Isaiah 45, 5. Lord, no other God, none beside me. And Jesus will be seated on the right hand side from the true God is the Father. So Jesus is not another God alongside God because there's only one God. 
and you're telling me if ca a, a car have four doors and uh, uh, you have four uh, two eyes and only one mouth. Uh, listen to this, Isaiah 46, 9, I am God and there's no other. There's none like me. No one is like God, including Jesus. Jesus, the servant, slave of God. Islam 102, verse 27. Only God remains the same. And Jesus, according to Matthew, uh, on, on, uh, uh, on the mountain, he transfigured. That means he is false God. And the God doesn't change. As I said, immortal, invisible, eternal, who live in approachable light where no one see or can see. Uh, this is Timothy, Ti Timo, uh, 6, 15, 16. Alone is immortal and live in approachable light who no one can see. What can I say? I come back to the Quran. The Quran in 198, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begat a son. Uh, God. One minute. He, okay, one minute. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begat no one, but he create everyone by when he says the word be and it will be. And Jesus is uh, came to existence by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the, uh, the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God sent as a human shape as an angel and told Mary, because God himself would not, but according to your Bible, even your, uh, the Father, he overpowered and overshadow Mary to beget himself as a son. That means he raped, he raped Mary, uh, the, the girl who was supposed to be the wife of Joseph. And your God is but a raper as well, and a killer and a tyrant. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, you got 20 seconds, Yahya, unless you 20, want to stop there. 20 seconds. How can I trust uh, this, uh, this God, son or a father? How can I trust your God? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Yahya. Thank you for that opening statement. Um, thank you, everybody. I think we got like over 800 people uh, tuning. So praise the Lord for that. Um, yeah, so we're now going to be moving on to the rebuttal rounds, which is going to be five minutes, four rounds of five minutes. Um, let me just unmute, brother Sam here. You got and me on mute. Hello. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to mute now. Yeah, yeah. I don't know because it's not going to happen if you can't hear me. You get my attention, JC? Yeah, of course. Okay, so now we're going to go on. Let me make brother calm down. You're rushing. Breathe, JC. Calm down. What are you for? Rush? Calm down. This guy just called God a rapist. I'm going to embarrass this filthy dog. I'm going to show his prophet is a filthy dog scum because he called God a rapist. So now the gloves are off. Now, yeah, yeah, don't be, don't be upset when I bury your prophet, that filthy scum dog of the devil, that bastard. Okay. Okay, now let's begin my time. Can we begin my okay. time? We're okay. going to begin the time. So this round now is going to be rebuttals. Uh, yeah. So your five minutes, Sam, begins okay. now. Now, because he's a filthy scum like his prophet, sorry, guys, I have to be direct. He called my God a rapist. He just condemned his prophet as a scum of the devil because in chapter 66, verse 12, yeah, yeah, you're going to read the Arabic. I'm going to embarrass you in front of your wife. Okay, 66, verse 12, Surah Al-Tahrim. It says, Mary Ahsanat Farjaha. She guarded her vagina and your filthy dog, that rapist dog that you call Allah, breathed into it of the spirit. And we breathe into her vagina. What a filthy God you have, a scum God you have, a raping, molesting God. I spit on your God, Allah. Thank Jesus he's burning in hell with your prophet. So you insult my God, I'm going to humiliate your filthy God. So shut your mouth, respect my God, or I'm going to humiliate your God. It's your filthy God that blew his, blew his spirit into a woman's vagina. Ahsanat farjaha. Now let me share something with you. If I say to your wife, hey, ahsanat farjaha. Yeah, yeah, your wife, she guarded her farj. Can I breathe into it? You would smack me in the mouth. You ever insult my God, I'm going to humiliate your prophet and that filthy devil that possessed your prophet. If you go back and read Luke 135, it doesn't say my God 
rape Mary, God forbid, rape Mary in order to beget himself as a son. This again shows you're stupider than your prophet Muhammad because we don't believe Jesus is the father. And if you read the passage when it says that overshadowed her, it means that the Holy Spirit came upon her in power to cause her to conceive as a virgin. Only someone filthy like Muhammad and his God could twist that and say, my God is a rapist. Your God is a rapist, molester, scum of the devil. So now learn your lesson. Respect my God. I'm going to humiliate your God for being a filthy dog that he is. Glory to Jesus Christ. Then you said, you were stupid enough to say, you were stupid enough to say, nowhere did Jesus say, nowhere did Jesus say, right, that he's the son of God. Okay, remember guys, this is what he said. Nowhere did Jesus say he's the son of God. Here's what's ironic. Even the chapter recorded, John 17, let's read verses 1 to 3. When Jesus spoke these words, he lifted his eyes toward heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son. See, he can't help it. He's a liar like Muhammad. Jesus there says to the father, glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you. As you've given him authority over all flesh, he, the son, will give eternal life to all whom you have given him. That's when verse 3 comes. This is the eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So the very verse, the context, Jesus says, I am the Son of God whom the Father will glorify the same way the Son glorifies him. I want this child of the devil to show me his prophet or any prophet saying to God, glorify me, your Son, in order I may glorify you. And I, your Son, have power to give eternal life to everyone. He won't find it. It's not there. And then again, in his ignorance, he misquotes 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16, thinking it's about God the Father. So Yahya, thank you for quoting that because in context, Paul is talking about Jesus, the God of Muhammad who destroyed your prophet, that dog of the devil in hell. Let's see what you quoted. Who's it referring to? You quoted it, not me. You're stuck with it. 1 Timothy 6, 14 to 16. <clears throat> to keep this commandment without blemish, blameless unto, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he, who? The Lord Jesus Christ, who's the blessed, and only ruler, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, will reveal at the proper time. He who, Jesus Christ, alone has immortality, living in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen nor can see. To him be honor and everlasting power. Amen. The very passage that this son of Satan quoted ends up proving Jesus is God Almighty, who alone is immortal, whose light is unbearable, cannot be seen. And he's the King of all kings, the Lord of lords. And then he made the stupid mistake, guys. He made the stupid mistake of quoting Hebrews 1.12 to say, see, God doesn't change. Again, Yahya, because your prophet was no smarter than you, so you're following the son of your prophet. That's actually talking about Jesus. It's the father talking about Jesus in Hebrews 1.12. Let's read it. Hebrews 1.12. One one, say it again. One minute. Okay, Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, lasts forever and ever. He's talking to the Son. And the Father says to the Son, you, Lord, Father saying to the Son, you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. Father saying to the Son, you remain, and they all will wear out like a garment, and as a cloak you will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you, the Son, are the same, and your years will not end. What an embarrassment to you and your prophet to make a stupid mistake of just going to a website, quoting verses out of context, not knowing in the context, it's talking about Jesus. So Jesus is the unchangeable God who destroyed your God and Muhammad in hell, your God, that filthy, molesting rapist. Talk about Time. my prophet and you. what I do to you. Thank you for that, uh, Sam. Let me unmute. <laughs> Let me unmute. Uh, yeah, yeah. Collect. So you have five minutes of rebuttal. Yeah, yeah. Begins now. Against, against your will, my prophet has glorified Jesus and show us in the, the Quran that Jesus is one of the mightier, mightiest prophets no more. And when you talk about uh, the son saying to his father, glorify the son, uh, all the, uh, the glory you're talking about, the father just allow his son to be humiliated by soldier Roman who even took his clothes, and you are the blessed one. What the blessed one? Jesus, according to you, is a curse, and cursed by God as anyone who hang on a tree is cursed by God. Jesus is but a curse, and he takes the curse 
of you because you and you, the Christian and Jew, are cursed people because you actually get access and your religion and you worship the worshiper instead of worshiping the true God who sent who sent Jesus. So you uh, you call you call you call him my prophet and my God. Uh, uh, go and open your Bible and Genesis 1, 1, 31, and you will see that the one you are offending, Allah is your God. All the Christian and the Jew, they know Allah is the only true God. Genesis 1, 1, 31, open any Arabic book and read it for yourself. And now let's come to your, 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 your sinless Jesus, your sinless God. Uh, the racist liar, uh, filthy, uh, filthy, filthy man, uh, who in Matthew 10, 34, 39, don't think I come uh, to bring peace, but a sword and division. Uh, Mark uh, 8, 27, 30, uh, hiding his, his ID. Don't tell anyone that I am Christ. Uh, Jesus warned not to tell who he is. He is but a coward who was running even from his own people who he was sent to. He performed and he told them, don't say who I am. He hide his, he, he is, uh, let's show you the broken promises by your, your mighty God, Jesus, the sinner, the sinner racist liar. Matthew 10, 23 and 16, 28. You will talking to the generation in front of him. You will not finish going through the city of Israel before the son of man comes. After 2020 years, it seems that he missed the cloud as he is coming on and they perish all of them. 1628, 1628, the true some, some who are standing here, they will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Where, wh why didn't he come in his kingdom for his people that he promised? Mark one minute. Nine, one minute. Mark 9, 1, I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here, they, they will not taste death before they see kingdom of God coming with power. Your Jesus was but a liar, racist, 15, 23, 28, 15, 23, 28, where he calls a woman dog and she Gentiles and she was desperate to cure her daughter. And you have you have the guts and dare to come and speak and attack. That shame on you and on, on your Bible and on your Christianity. Thank you for that, uh, Yahya. Let me reset the timer now for Sam and your Second round of five minutes. Let me let me unmute Sam. JC, you're listening. JC, are you listening? Yeah. Oh. Okay. This dog Go is ahead. out of control. This dog is blaspheming out of control. I want cross examination because I'm not going to tolerate this blasphemy. Put me and him on. We're going to cross examine because you can't control him. You're not controlling him. This filthy dog has been blaspheming Jesus. Now I'm going to bury him and his prophet and humiliate his God. I don't play that game. So I want cross examination. Put me and him on now so I can ask him questions. Now or he's gotta go because you're not controlling okay. the healthy dog. The debate is the Trinity in the Bible, but this low life dog who's more of a dog than his prophet Muhammad has been blaspheming Jesus and you're sitting there doing nothing. Put on cross examination so I can bury this dog in front of his wife. Put it on right now. <clears throat> okay, so cross cross examination now, Yakya. Yeah, yeah. And I your didn't minutes, call you um, dog. Yes, you did. Yep. You you said my God is a rapist. You said Jesus was a liar and he was a rapist and that he called Gentile swine. Not what I'm going to do to you and your prophet and your God. Open up your Bible. Get ready. Now I'm going to embarrass you because you bark like a dog. I'm going to muzzle you. I told you don't be stupid, but you're stupid like your prophet. Let's do this. Come on. Cross-examination. Okay. Open up your Bible. Okay. Get ready. Let's start now, Sam. Let's go. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Because I, I don't see his ugly face. He's not talking. And it's like the screen is frozen. Is it okay? Now, Yahya, open up your Bible so I can embarrass you and your prophet. Are you ready? I don't need to open it. Just you read. I'm not going to read for okay. you. No, because you quote. No, no, you're going to because you quoted verses that you don't know what you're talking about. You said Matthew 10, 23. Open up your Bible before I embarrass your prophet 
open up Matthew 10, 23. Give me the context before I make your prophet cry from the pit of hell with your God. What is the context of Matthew 10, 23? Do you remember that dog? What's the context? What is the context of Matthew 10, 23, Yahya? I'm going to muzzle uh, you. What's the context? Listen, listen. You call Answer me dog. A dog doesn't what read. What is the context I, you... of Matthew 10, 23? Don't play games with me. What's the context? What's the context? That's a question, Yahya. So what's the context? That Jesus is but a, ra a racist, a what racist liar. Words? You, you, you read it. You read what? it. The context of Jesus' words in Matthew 10 23. Don't make me embarrass you on your prophet. Open it and read it. Read it. Okay? Because you're going to be stupid and blaspheme. I'm going to punish your prophet. See, that's what happens. You don't know who you're playing with, Yahya. Open up. Let's see. Let's see which of the verses you got right. Every verse I'm going to use to bury your prophet. Give you're, me not the bury, you're not burying my prophet. Be, oh, yeah, because okay. he, 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 Jesus already buried your prophet in hell. You're right. Thank you. But now read for me the context. What is he talking about? Why are you muting me? Why are you muting me? Why, 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 you, need to answer, you need to answer the question on topic. Uh, yeah, yeah. So what's the context? Open the Bible. Don't waste our you, time. Now you're wasting our time. You're going to be sent to Mecca. I don't care about time. Okay, I give you the reference. Open. I give you the reference of guy, your Bible. And you call me a dog, and dogs, they don't... Because when you, you are like, God, like Jesus, when you call the my God a rapist, I'm going to embarrass your prophet, you wicked dog. When you call my God a rapist, you are worse than a dog. Stop making excuses. You act tough. Now I'm going to embarrass you. See, people are laughing because you don't know the context. You are taking verses out of context from an article, and I'm humiliating you and your prophet. What's the context of Matthew 10, 23? A final time. Open it. Don't waste time. People aren't here for your games. Open it. Read it. Okay. Read it. What you get? I'm not, about my God. I, I, I'm not going to open it and read it. Okay. So you then uh, you okay. forfeit the debate. To open it and read it, I will listen. You're going to. Like I opened the Quran, opened the Bible, I'm prepared. Why aren't you prepared? Because you have a prepared speech. Now that I destroyed your prepared speech, you're... <laughs> Go to the Bible, give me the context. Don't be reading from a website because now I'm going to embarrass you. When you open your mouth to blaspheme the Lord, I will slay you spiritually by the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't know who I am. I'm going to put you in your cell place, you little dog. Open up, Matthew, your Bible now, or you forfeit the debate. You need to go to hell. You, open. you but the pig, and you call him me dog. Open it. You and your God. You know, right, let's, take, uh, let's stay on this. Is, yaka, uh, yaka, is, yaka. You be, want to be offensive? I will, I will be offensive everyone to you. Saw, uh, you okay. don't tell me what to do. Everyone right, saw who was offensive. Who's the one? You, you don't tell me what to do. A rapist. Okay, I give you, I give you reference. Let me, 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 okay, cool. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm amusing you guys. Let's, 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 <laughs> let's take a breather here. Let's take a breather here. Okay, it's, it's emotional. Um, this very um, unpleasant things we've heard about uh, Lord Jesus Christ and from, from you, Yahya, of course. And we are simply asking a very simple question that Sam is asking, which is, what's the context of Matthew? Yeah, you have, you have to listen to the, you have to tell us exactly what's the context. If you don't know the context, he will explain to you and he will teach you what the context is. But if you do know the context, please tell us now and I will unmute you. And please answer that. What's the context of Matthew that Sam is referring? Are you asking me about Matthew 15, 23, 28? Sorry, sorry, Sam. Let me unmute you. Sorry. Are you, are you oh, asking okay. me oh, about second. Matthew yeah. uh, one 15? Okay, one second. For the record, it's recorded. Everyone can see because you have Muslims, liars like you. You started the insult by saying Jesus raped, God raped Mary. So I'm going to insult you now. You have no respect. I'm going to insult you. You started it and it's recorded. So people don't say I started it. But I want you to go Matthew 10, 23. You don't know the context. You're an embarrassment. So I'm going to now try to be nice to you so you don't run to Mecca again like you did for 20 days. I've been waiting for you. Go to Matthew 10, 23. Tell me what the context is. Okay. Matthew 10, 23. Uh, yeah, okay. When you're ready, I'll unmute you and you will explain us the context of Matthew 10, 23. Go ahead. Take your time. Yep. And you can hear me, JC, so I interact with him. 
I'm not gonna mute him now. Yeah, and he uh, can hear me, so we can go back and forth again. Yeah, he can definitely hear you. Yeah. Uh, right now, he can he can say anything because he's muted. Yeah, no, and we, we gotta mute both of us so we can interact. If you mute him and me, we're not gonna be able to interact. So we gotta both be unmuted so we can interact. Okay, let me unmute him now, and I hope he has. If he doesn't answer, he doesn't just for the context of two, two, three. Okay. Matthew ten twenty three. You said. Yeah. What's the context of it? What's the context, uh, please, Jackie? The context: Jesus is talking with his apostle, and he's telling them, "If you were rejected in one place, just carry on walking to another place." What's that to do with the races? As I told you, no, you're uh, not listening. Don't give me a speech. Fifteen twenty six. Don't, Don't give me a speech. Read to me what he means when he says, "You will not have gone throughout all the." tribes of Israel until the Son of Man comes, because in your stupidity you said, that means Jesus is going to return, he never did, and then you blasphemed him, but I'm going to show you're stupid, you don't know the verse. Can you show me what the context, what it means that until the Son of Man comes? Don't give me a speech, explain the context. If you don't know the context, we respect that and we'll explain it to you, but if you do know the context, please explain it to us, please. I, I didn't give you only one No, we're going to one at and, a time. Oh, yeah. don't give the I give you many I'll, I'll give you from Matthew. I'll address every one of them. Can you address first Matthew 10? And then we'll go Matthew 15, and I'll bury you in Matthew 15. You didn't even address one. You gave me many. I will take them one at a time, and I'm going to put you in your place. Can you tell okay. me what the context is? If okay. not, you don't. Okay. You will not finish. You will not finish going through the city of Israel before the Son of Man comes. What's the, what does that mean in the context? It means that the, as the apostle will go around uh, pre preaching uh, to obedience uh, to the people of Israel, and they come back, uh, Jesus, come they back will when? see Jesus. Come back when? At his time, because he's talking oh, with this generation. What time? With, no, with what the, his time. His time. Yeah. His, his time. His time. His time. His time, because... Okay, I, I, I am right. patient. Matthew 24, 34, which you must quote, is not the context of Matthew 10, 33. See, you think I'm stupid like you. I don't know my Bible like you don't know the Quran. What time? Because in Matthew 24, 34, that's a different context. In that context, he talks about the gospel being preached to the whole world. Don't embarrass yourself. In this context, Matthew 10, 23, in this context, when will the Son of Man come? Is it referring second coming or is it referring to the fact that when he sends them out, he will then be reunited to them during that time on earth, not the future? What is the context? If they are, if they are persecuted by others and they don't and they reject. Well, who's others? Wait, wait, that's embarrassing. He's what? talking to who are, uh, his apostles. And who's this is them? Uh, and he's talking about that Read time. Matthew 10, 17 to 18, because now you just embarrassed yourself. Matthew 10, 17 to 18. Read it. Okay. okay. Let me pause the time here. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he's got to answer all these because he started blaspheming. I'm not going to play his games or respect his rules. I was trying to respect them, but it's not going to happen now. Go to Matthew yeah, 10, and now you're going to embarrass yourself because you don't know context. You don't know context. Because remember what you said. I'm going to repeat everyone said. You quoted Matthew 10, 5 to 6, saying that Jesus sent the Jews only to the lost sheep of Israel, not to Samaritans, anyone else. Now read 17 to 18. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local council and flog you in their synagogue. On my account, you will be brought before governor and kings and be witness against them. And the generation, uh, wait, wait, read it. Uh, Gentiles and Gentiles. Okay, now pause there. Yeah, yeah. It says, You will be taken before the Gentile rulers and you'll be a witness to them and the Gentiles. Now, in chapter 10 and 11, did that happen? Did, were they taken to the Gentiles or that was future later? I, I reckon he was taken to Gentiles with the Roman Let when me, he persecuted him. him. No, we're talking and about he, he, no, 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 no. Uh, oh, yeah. He said the apostles will be beaten and taken to the Gentiles, not him. 
and then there'll be a witness to the Gentiles when that happens. Did that happen in Matthew 10, Matthew 11, Matthew 12? It didn't happen with, okay. with the apostle. It happened oh, with your, your oh. main God. You just said didn't happen. That's how you know you don't have a clue of what the Bible says. Because in Matthew 10, 23, he says in that mission, the Son of Man will come to them before they reach all the Jews. He was not talking about second coming. He was telling them, now that I send you only to the Jews, you won't be able to reach all of them when I am regathered to you, not future, now in my ministry. So that's why I say you twisted the text. That phrase, the Son of Man come, has nothing to do with Matthew 24, 34, or Matthew 16, 27. He's telling them, you're going to the Jews right now, only them. Later on, you'll be going to the Gentiles. But right now, when you go to the Jews, you won't reach all the Jews until I come to you, meaning now. And that's what happened in Matthew 11. He came to them and they didn't finish their mission. So you got busted on that one. So now let's go to Matthew 15. Let me bust you on this one then. Which and one? Nine one, when he's talking to the people who are standing there, and he's telling them, "You will not taste death before you, 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 you uh, see the kingdom of God come with with power." Beautiful. And now it's two thousand and twenty, and you don't miss. Don't run. don't run. Let me now humiliate you. Read two to seven, which you didn't read. You just read Mark nine one. Read it again, so I can humiliate you and your prophet because you don't know my Bible. Read Mark nine one again. Read it one more time, slowly. Your Bible give always read mixed Mark message. Because it's, it's not a, a but a read Mark one. Read it again. Read Mark wicked, again. Wicked. Read it again, please, Yahya. Read it again. Read it again. Read it. Deceitful book. Why read should Mark I read it? Nine one again. I have. I Mark, have more. You can say what you want. Mark nine one again. Read it one more time. Let's see if you understand or you're illiterate like your prophet. Read Mark. Keep you on topic. Let's 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 stay on topic. Yeah, okay. address address this. Um, he changed the topic from this the question. This you see how he changed the topic. Yeah. Right? He's a coward, but it's okay. Read Mark let's nine verse one. If I am a coward, I wouldn't debate Read you. Read Mark and I nine how one. How so twisted and, and how one. wicked like, and lying. Read, read, read it, please. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I know you. You're fiery. If you wanna give. Um, if you can read the context, if you if you, if you can answer some on this particular issue, then we we'll yeah. The kitten is inside. Okay, cool. <laughs> here we go. Go, Jack. Here, read Stay it, on yeah. topic. Read it. I don't call it. me coward. I will, I will read it. I will read it, but yeah, don't please, call please. me coward because if I'm a coward, I wouldn't debate you. No, and I know right. how much you are. But go ahead, don't. Fair. Fair okay, enough. yeah, good. Uh, I actually give you that much, yeah. Uh, I, I actually give you that much because you are the um, the, the only few Muslims who are yeah brave enough to and debate. By the way, the reason why JC, the Muslims don't debate because they know if they insult my Lord, I'm going to tear, tear them up. You, so if they can't insult my Lord, get away with it. Now, Mark read 9 1, read it again. Go ahead, let's focus now. And he said, and he said to them, I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. Okay. Did they see it or they perish? Okay, well, I'm going to finish the answer. Now read 2 to 7 for your answer. Read 2 to 7 for your answer. 2, two to 7, two please. To seven. Yeah. yeah, read it slowly. Yeah, yeah. So slowly, I have to clearly. go back to Mark 2 and uh, no, read. No, Mark chapter 9, the same yeah. chapter. You read verse 1, read 2 to 7. Mark 9, it's verses 1 to 7. But like your prophet, you like to read one verse here and there and take it out of context. Mark 9, verse 1. Now read verses 2 to 7. Jesus answered you. Mark destroyed your religion if you read context. Read it. When you talk about me, don't mention my prophet. Can we read that? Not, you want to debate yeah. that you want to read? The transfiguration. Do you want after, to read? The after, after six days. Jesus took James and John with him and led them, I, uh, led them up a high mountain where they uh, were alone. There was he transfigured before them. And as I remind you, he transfigured and God, the true God, shut it, shut it, shut it, let me finish, shut it. Don't be rude. No, no, no. Read it, read it, read it. As I read, as I read before. Read the verses. 
Breathe the verses, please, Jackie. Let's 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 uh let's be cool. Come on. Yeah, his clothes become dazzling white, whiter than than anyone and the and the world uh, could could bleach them, and they spare them with Elijah and Moses, and were talking with Jesus. So even there is uh, so, some uh, guest honor uh, Moses and Elijah. They come to see the transfigured God who you, I gave you the reference before. Let me finish. Question. Let me finish. Read you, the verses. No, 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 let me finish. Read the verses. Yeah, yeah. Don't make me embarrass you. Finish it. You didn't even finish it. It takes less than a minute. Finish it, finish it, Jackie. And then uh, we can go to a uh, crossfire because well, um, this, this, this debate is going. Um, it's going nowhere. He's got to yeah. go. Let him finish this. Okay. So, People see yeah. he's a clown. He doesn't know the Bible. Go ahead. Okay, I'm, I'm going to mute you now, Jackie. So finish, finish the verse, please. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not, he did it not know what to say. They were so frightened. So your God is scary. Here we go again. Can you read the verse? I'm going to embarrass you. Finish the verse, please. Hey, yeah. it. You're hey, embarrassing yourself. Hey, Don't make hey, yourself hey, look hey, like an ass. Okay, okay, okay. Then a cloud appeared and envelop, envelop them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Okay. So read, this okay, is what well, want. Now we can comment. Why didn't you read verses 2 to 7? Because Mark, Matthew, and Luke, all three, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, they mention the same saying of Jesus. And then right after explain what he means, that some here will not teach that until they see the Son of Man coming in the kingdom. Because that's what happened on the mountain. Jesus showed some of them what he will look like when he comes in glory in his Father's kingdom. So Mark 9 explained what Jesus meant. Matthew 17, explain what Jesus meant. Luke 9, explain what Jesus meant. Only someone like you could be so dishonest to read one verse and ignore the verses after that. Why did you do that, Yahya? Let me, let me tell you why I do that. Because yes, uh, your Bible brings confusion, contradiction to uh, the reader. Because when he talk about generation, he's talking about people, many people, not three people, to see okay. yeah, yeah. how he looked like. Why, 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 why he didn't, why he didn't transfigure. Yeah, yeah. Mark 9 does not say this generation. Why are you taking another verse from another chapter and reading in Mark 9? Why are you so dishonest? Can you show me in Mark 9, 1, where it says, this generation shall not pass. Why are okay. you taking different verses and confusing them? That's your Quran. That's not my Bible. It is in Mark 13, 30, 31. Mark 13, you Mark like chapter 9? Uh, oh, wait, wait. wait. Don't it's you believe? Mark, 9, Mark 13. Okay. Yes 13, or no? Wait. Yes 13, or no? Is Mark 9, Mark 13? Yes or no? It is Mark who narrated this. I agree You're with you. You're not answering my question. Is Mark 9, 1 the same as Mark 13? Yeah, it is Mark the same person. You're no. not answering the question. So, third time. It's it's Mark, Mark the yeah, same yeah. context. Listen, listen, Mark listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now, come on. You, you play, you're playing stupid now, yeah. You, no, you know we love you. Stupid. It's okay. He's playing stupid and he's playing ignorant. And okay, okay. we love it's you, yeah. So you know, it's, you know exactly the question. So listen to the question and engage with the question, please, Jackie. Yeah? Sam, once again, yeah. please. Is Mark nine the same context as Mark thirteen? Yes or no? It's a different context for the same again? narrator. Oh, it again? Different oh. context. Different, different context. context. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. It's a different context for the same narrator. That means he so is what? contradicting himself. Muhammad. Uh, shut up. Shut up. Don't tell about Muhammad. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad no, no, no. Answer me. Answer me. So if I use your logic, if Muhammad says something in chapter 112 that's different from chapter 2, it's the same na narrator, so I have to then do to the Quran what you're doing to Mark. You see how stupid that sounds? But everyone heard you. Praise the Lord Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge. Everyone heard you. Different context. Now let's go to Mark 13. Let's deal with Mark 13. Let me know when you're ready to go back and smooch the stone because it's looking bad for you. Let's go to Mark 13. 
they are not allowing us to go and smooth the stone. But uh, your I, 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 have, I did have the pleasure. I did have the pleasure to go and see it and kiss it as well. Can we go to Mark 13? Since you want Mark 13, yeah, yeah, yeah. the debate okay. shouldn't be in the Bible. Okay. Go to Mark 13, and I want you to do me a favor. Read verse 10, and we're going to read your verse too. I'm not like you. I'm not going to run. But go to Mark 13, read verse okay. 10. I want to ask you a question before I do that. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. If the same narrator, he's given us in two different chapters, different mm -hmm. narration, that is he lying? Or he's deceiving, or which one is the truth? Can okay. you answer me? Yeah, please? Yeah. I'm embarrassed for you. If I have to answer that honestly, you're going to look very stupid to people. Because I like to be to look like stupid. Can I answer? Can I answer? Yeah, answer. Answer. Let, me answer. Answer. Let me answer. A narrator can talk about two different things in two different contexts without confusing or lying. Because I just said that about your Muhammad and Quran. You said Muhammad, he gave you the Quran, 114 chapters. Using your stupid logic, that means if Muhammad said something in one chapter, and then he said something else in another chapter, he must be referring to the same thing, so he's confused. Don't embarrass yourself, Yahya, please. Let's not be the stupid. Pretend you're a little smarter. Police. Now, can you go to Mark 13, verse 10? And read it for me. Mark 13, verse 10. Uh, yeah. yeah, this was supposed about the Trinity, but because of his blasphemous mouth, I had to put him in his place. Next time, JP, don't use this guy as a debate. He's a joke. Bring someone more qualified. But anyway, Mark 13, verse 10. Look, I am in my place, and this is, uh, I go to Can we read Mark 13, 10, man? Uh, this is too late. It's over two hours. People are tired. Please, Mark 13, 10. Please. People are tired. They're sick of your nonsense. Let's finish. Go to Mark 13, 10. It's been over two hours. Okay. Let's uh, please. 13. 10. Yes. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Can you read it again? Slowly and fully. And the gospel, I don't know which gospel because each one. Oh, uh, don't change uh, the word. And the gospel, I don't know which one. Can must you be just read the verse? Stop with your stupid tafsir because I'm going to embarrass you every time you do that. Yeah, yeah. Read yes, the yes. verse. You're embarrassing your Bible because it's exactly. not fully Ikra. confusion. Bible Ikra. 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 As the gospel must Ikra. first be preached to all nations. So it's contradicting. Finish Go the verse. I, 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 finish finish the verse. I finish it. 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 Read it one more time. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Okay, so yeah. right there, that verse you don't like, it's a contradiction. That's fine, but everyone heard it. The same Jesus said, this gospel will be preached to all nations, right? Okay, now, the same chapter, I want you, same chapter, read verses 26 to 27. Same chapter. Okay, same chapter, okay. And then after this, he can ask me questions, I'll answer. I'll give him as much time you want, he can ask me questions. At that time, at that time, at that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in cloud with the great power and glory. Mm -hmm. And he will send his angel and gather his elect from the four winds from the end of the earth and end of the heaven. Okay. Are now, you happy now? No, wait, wait. Now, hold on. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of Man who rides the clouds and comes with the angels? Yes or no? No. You don't believe I, it? I don't trust your Bible. Okay. I have one so wait, million wait, saying contradiction for Jesus contradicting himself. Let, let, okay. let him finish his point. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Everyone just heard you. You quoted a verse you can't accept because it destroys Islam because it shows that Jesus is not simply a servant and a creature as you lie because you kept quoting verses where Jesus is a servant prophet thinking that's all he is. Here's a ver the very book you're quoting. Where Jesus says he's the son of man who comes with the clouds of heaven with his angels to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. Which according to the Quran shows Jesus claimed to be God. Because in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 210 Allah comes with the clouds and the angels. Jesus says I do that. So here's the verses that show that in Mark Jesus claimed to be more than a man. He claimed to be God the son of God. And yet you're trying to prove that Jesus didn't claim to be God. So thank you because these very verses prove. That your deen is a lie. Because you remember in Mark 9, the father said, 
the father said, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Do you believe the father came down on the Mount of Transfiguration in a cloud and that Peter, James, and John heard the father speak audibly, speak and say, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Do you believe God did that? Please answer that. Let me unmute you. Do you believe God did that? No, but, no, and I say no, why? No, and I say why? Can I? Can you? Can you? Can go you ahead. hear me out? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the, the Bible teach no one have heard or seen God. No You're one lying. know His form. And You're who lying. you you saying uh, the three apostles they heard what the God You're, saying? You're lying. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm not lying. lying. I'm not lying. I know the verse. Can I tell you the you, verse? Yeah, I'll tell you what you're quoting. I know what you're quoting. I'm not like you. I know the word of God. You don't. You're quoting John 5, 37, yeah, yeah. I don't have my notes. You have notes that you took from a website. You're lying because you don't understand what Jesus said. Let me read it. Let me show you why you're lying. Because you don't know the Bible. You're an ignoramus or a liar or both. Let me read the verse that you're misquoting. The Father himself who has sent me has borne witness of me. Now notice again. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. Jesus didn't say no one ever have heard the voice of the Father or seen him. He's talking to the unbelievers. He's saying, you unbelievers standing before me, you have not seen his form or heard his voice. Stop misquoting the Bible to me. Yeah, yeah. Please, for the love of God, you're going to get embarrassed. The same Gospel of John. Now let me read John 12, 28 to 30. The same Gospel of John. John 12, 28 to 30. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have glorified it. A voice from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice came not for my sake, but for your sake. So, Yahya, you're a liar. That's not what John 5, 37 says. Or I'll be nice to you. You're an ignoramus. You don't know what the Bible says. Jesus did not say, Yahya, no one ever heard his voice or seen a shape. He's talking to those people in front of him. You, unbelievers, you have never seen a shape or heard his voice. Now that I corrected your shameless distortion of John 5, 37, do you agree with Mark 9, verse 7, that the Father came down in a cloud and the apostles Peter, James, and John heard the Father say, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Yes or no, Yahya? No. Answer. Say what no, he said. What? I said no. Thank you. So why are you quoting Mark to prove that Jesus isn't God when Mark destroys your religion and Muhammad and proves Jesus is God? Let, let me give you uh, why I don't trust your Bible. I'm going to give you the contradiction that God can be seen and as the same Bible. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, We're not talking about the, the, the corruption no, of the Bible. God being seen, JC. Let that do your it. Bible, that your Bible is corrupted and cannot be okay, trusted. Okay, give me, give me the verses. Yeah, okay, give me. Okay. God can be seen. Give it to me. Just come on. God, God. God can be seen and heard. God can be seen and heard. Okay. Exodus twenty four nine eleven. Beautiful. Thirty three twenty three, thirty three eleven. We Genesis three nine, <sighs> verse number nine and ten. Genesis thirty two. Yeah. Verse number yeah, 30. Verses. Give me the verses that you think contradict. No, I know these just verses. one verse. One verse. Now, no, no, I give you. I will give you the one who God cannot be seen and invisible. Yes. John right. one eighteen. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's it. One, yeah. John one, one eighteen. One. Okay. One, John, John one eighteen. One. One. Let's take just this one. One okay, Timothy. Ready? One Timothy six sixteen. Okay, let's let's deal with this one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're not listening. Did you hear what I said that 1 Timothy 6 is about Jesus? Did you hear that or you didn't hear that? You pretended you were not hearing. Let's read 1 Timothy 6, 14, 16. Let me read what it says. Let me read it for you. You mentioned 1 Timothy. I'll go to John 1. Every one of these are going to prove Muhammad is a liar and Jesus is the God of Muhammad. So thank you, Yahya. 1 Timothy 6, 14 and 16. Let's read it carefully, Yahya. To keep this commandment without blemish, blameless until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he, who? Jesus Christ, who is the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, will reveal at the proper time. He, who's he? Verse 14, Jesus Christ, alone has immortality, living in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen nor can see. 
To him be honor and everlasting power. Amen. It's talking here about the light that Jesus wraps himself in that will blind you when you see it, which is what happened to Paul. So, Yahya, you quoted 1 Timothy 16, 16 in front of everyone. Do you agree with Paul? Jesus is the blessed only ruler, king of kings, lord of lords. He alone has immortality, and he dwells in unapproachable light, and you are to give him honor forever and ever. Do you agree? Do you think I'm that stupid? No, no, you don't agree. No, no, no. no. Do you think I'm that stupid? You yes or no? He yeah. alone is immortal. Yes. And let me remind you, didn't Jesus on the cross gave up his life and he was okay. mortal? Yeah, I'll answer that question. You're changing the topic. So no, no, I'm not changing thing. the topic. We are talking first, about first, God. Fifty-six. Let, let's for. I'll deal with the cross. You're going to get embarrassed. Like I said, this is the end of your religion and the end of your career as an apologist. Do you agree with Paul? Who quoted First Timothy six sixteen? You did. Not me. You quoted it. Not me. So do you agree with Paul that Jesus in First Timothy, he alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light. He is our Lord, who will come from heaven, and that he's the only sovereign rule, ruler, king of kings, and Lord of lords. Do you agree? Yes or no? It's a verse talking about the Father, not the what Son. In 14, it's talking it's about the father, not the son. No, it isn't. And let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say something. Let me say something. And John is the biggest lie. And John, because according to Genesis 1 1 31, there's only one God who are creating, and there was no such uh, existence for the world. The Why don't you listen? I, I'm no, talking. You're changing I'm talking. The subject. Wait, uh, it's all related. It's your Bible who I'm exposing. JC, I'll, I look, I'm, I'm not JC. Yeah, I'm not like you. I'll answer Genesis 1. I'm not afraid like you. But you keep jumping. Stop one at a time. You went to 1 Timothy 6. You reject that because it refuted you. You brought up John 1.18. Do you want me to deal with John 1.18? Then I'll deal with Genesis 1 and John and further embarrass you. Do you, you brought up John 1.18. Can we deal with John 1.18? Can I ask you just one question? Go ahead. Did go Jesus ahead, did Jesus die on the cross or he is mortal and mortal? He is immortal who can die a human death and still be alive. What's so he's acting death. No. Yeah, yeah. Please don't insult my intelligence. Well, yeah, you are not intelligent. You are dumb. Right? You, you, can you answer the question? Yeah. Let me embarrass you now. Okay, can embarrass me. Answer, can I answer your question, Yahya? I'm not yeah. like you. I'm not a tap dancer. Let me answer yeah. your question. Answer. Okay. When you bring this question, you're either an ignoramus or you're a liar again because the Quran agrees with the Bible that when someone dies, he's still alive. Let me remind you from your false book that you believe. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 154. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 154. And then Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verses 169 to 170. There it says, The martyrs, the shaheed who are killed, those who are killed in the way of your Lord, do not say they're dead. Nay, they're alive. Say again to you, they're acting dead. You see how stupid you sound when you talk like this? The Quran and the Bible agree that someone can die physically and still be alive. So let me show you what Jesus said. Yes, Jesus died physically, but because he's God, he's ever living so that he's still alive while his body is dead. Something that even your Quran agrees with. John 2, verses 19 to 22. The same John you've been quoting, John 1, 18. Here's John 2, 19 and 22. Jesus, this is what he says. Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple. And will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking concerning the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had spoken. So Jesus, from the same gospel of John that you've been quoting, John 1, 18, you quoted. Jesus says, destroy this temple. I will raise it up. What temple? His body. How could Jesus... Raise his body back to life, Yahya, if Jesus wasn't still alive and conscious, even though his body was dead. So yes, he's immortal, can never die, but he took on a human body and experienced human death, 
while he was still alive. And because he's God, he raised that body to life, Yahya. Live with it. That's the gospel of John. Live with it. Let me expose you, you as fam. a big liar and uh, hear your father. Oh, thank you. Let me expo uh, expose you because Jesus, he didn't actually die for three days and three nights. Okay, it was only two again. nights and one oh, day. Yeah, yeah. You move with the goalpost. I listen to you. Yeah, okay. You move with the goalpost again. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Hey, now. JC, you, you move with the goalpost again. And JC, what you, can yeah. I just share this? It's already been close to three hours. This guy's the. So let's do wrap up. Yeah, he's let's he's wrap up. badly. He humiliated himself. Let's wrap I up. Am, okay. Let's send this guy back. Every time okay. I am answering him. Wrap up. Any questions? Any questions from? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Wrap up, you got what, 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 what second? Yeah, okay. so yeah, uh, first of all, thank you, thank you guys for, for joining the show. Um, fiery exchanges, you yeah. know, um, Yakia, you know, always <laughs> we, we know Yakia, he's a regular speaker's corner, and he, he goes he's someone to who, corner? oh my goodness, he's, speak, he's because speaker's corner for, for many years now, I think for five years or so. And uh, and we know him, we know he has very important questions about Christian theology, but unfortunately, he doesn't like to keep on topic, and that's something that. That um, uh, I know, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. So, what I like to do now is give the chance to the viewers. We, we go 800 viewers now and just give questions to the debaters, and then we do a wrap up after, after that. Yep. Um, yeah, cool. So, let me look for some guys. Yeah. If you want to um, uh, post questions, please type okay, at, questions, guys. Go ahead. at the beginning, and then uh, okay, cool. So, I got one question. Uh, so, go film. so why did Allah deceive everyone that Jesus was crucified and died and in order he created the largest religion, Christianity? So, this is for you, uh, Yakia. So, why did Allah deceive the uh, Christians into believing that the Christ was indeed crucified when in, he wasn't um, according to the Quran? Because, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't need the blood of his son and he doesn't need but sincerity and repentance and coming back for him and repentant and he will forgive and he doesn't need uh, to betray and forsake his son because he's anointed son and he's supposed to be love him so he would protect him and uh, he saved him because a, a man cannot die twice jesus peace upon him he put to sleep and raised to heaven alive because this uh, uh, three days and three nights is just by assumption and it wasn't three days and three nights and the Bible always give uh, confusion and lies. Okay, so that was, I mean, okay, hey, can you I answer that. To that? Like we yeah, did. please do so. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. Notice he, the guy doesn't answer the question again. The guy really is a disgrace to Islamic apologetics. He's not asked whether Allah needs blood or not. He was asked, why did Allah deceive the disciples in thinking Jesus died? Did he even answer that? He goes on the tangent again. Oh, but Allah doesn't need blood. He forsook his son and the three days, three nights. You didn't answer the question. The question is, if Jesus didn't die on the cross, and yet the historical evidence, all the evidence we have from the first century, all the evidence without exception from the followers of Jesus and their disciples, the Sahaba of Jesus and the Tabiun, all of them, without exception, he can't find an exception. Say Jesus died on the cross, was raised on the third day, and then physically went to heaven. So if the Quran is right, Allah didn't die. I'm sorry, Jesus didn't die. Allah made it appear unto him. Then Allah made it appear to the disciples, the Hawariyun. Jesus was killed when he wasn't. So Allah, this wicked, evil liar, deceived the disciples of Jesus, thinking Jesus died for them and preached it. So now it's the dominant message till this day. So you didn't answer the question again, Yahya, for the love of your God, because Allah is a deceiver and he can't be defended. And I hope you make the mistake of bringing up First Kings uh, <clears throat> against uh, 22, 23, like you did in the comment section, so I can really have fun with you. But go ahead. What's the next question? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, speaking of deceivers, uh, Yahya, um, we got a question. Soko Films for the Q&A. Okay. Ask Yahya why he can trust Allah and the Quran instead of the Bible. When Allah brags to be the best of deceivers. That's for you, Yahya. Don't take too long, please. After this, we're going to do a wrap-up from you guys. Go. The first question, Allah, uh, the disciples, they deserted and they ran away. And Allah, he didn't deceive them. And he raised him uh, to him and he didn't die on the cross. Second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the best of deceiver. 
he the best of deceivers that mean he wouldn't he would not guide those people like you who are enemy of him to to his his way and save them but he will let them and their deceive their bad intention and bad wicked soul till they die then he will put them to be toasted you uh, sam you will be toasted roasted and burned in hell like, like you and the all all the swans yeah okay okay can i respond okay now? thank you Thank you, Yahya. Sam, please respond. Yeah, guys, you, you guys admit he did say Allah is the best of all deceivers. He didn't deny that. He admit Allah is the best of all deceivers. And again, he misquotes the Bible. He says they all abandoned him. Guys, don't take my word for it. Go to read Mark 14 or any of the gospel accounts. Although they abandoned him as a group, they came back individually. The same gospels that he's misquoting say that when they left as a group, some came back like John and Peter and were there. And there are women followers who are at the cross with John and Jesus' mother. But this is what happens when you take verses out of context. But guys, thank him. He just admit Allah is the best of all deceivers. And what's ironic, he still hasn't been able to refute the fact Allah deceived the followers of Jesus into thinking Jesus died. They were convinced that he died. Then they were convinced he was raised physically, went to heaven to reign as Lord of Lords and King of Kings and started worshiping him and preached that message. So that message is still dominant over against Islam. All because of Allah deceiving them into believing a lie. And he wants me to follow this God that makes Satan look humble and honest in comparison. You can keep your God. We will worship Jesus, the son of God, Muhammad's God, judge and destroyer. Christ is risen. Thank you. Amen. Th thank you, Sam. Cool. So the last question, guys, before we right. do the wrap up is the following. Ramfa says, Soko Films. Yahya said he rejects Hadith. Islam scholars and even most popular websites... Islam Q&A says whoever rejects Hadith is not a Muslim. Does Yahya has his own version of Islam? That's for you, Yahya. Please respond on topic. Don't talk about the Trinity at this time. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Any, any Hadith teach opposite to the Quran, I put it in the bin. Because Hadith is the opinion of a human. And the, the holy book is Quran. And the uh, uh, he rejects to, to, to my God who doesn't need the blood to forgive and he preferred to have a, fa a father as a God who betrayed his son. Uh, congratulations with you and your God, the killer God. <laughs> Thank you, Yahya. Sam, please respond. Yeah, uh, JC, didn't the gentleman just say to Yahya, don't go about the Trinity? Why does this guy can't handle attacking the Bible and God when defending Islam. Is he that pathetically desperate? And is Muhammad that pathetically wicked and stupid and indefensible that every time there's a question about Islam, he attacks God and Jesus? I mean, do you guys see the pattern here? I'll talk about, hey, how was your mother? How was your mother doing today? Oh, but your God needs blood sacrifice. Hey, uh, is your daughter doing okay? You know, I don't believe your God because he wants sacrifice and he needs the... What does that got to do with the question? The question is about your religion, but you have to attack because the same spirit that molested your prophet is now molesting you. May Jesus save you from this wicked, evil spirit that molested Muhammad because it's too late for Muhammad. He's in hell, but there's hope for you. Turn to Jesus, your only hope of salvation, and your blasphemies won't get you far. The Lord has raised up warriors to silence blasphemers like you and shut your mouths so you never insult Jesus again. You will never insult him as long as there's breath in our lungs. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Okay, uh, Yaki, your three minutes of conclusion starts now. This is your conclusion now, Yaki. By the Let's way, when, start I answer, the when I answer any question, I'm responding at the same time for you. You should be happy. But uh, Con uh, conclusion you, you just want you me to talk listen. what you want me to say. Anyway, I invite, I invite you, come the true God, who doesn't need the blood to forgive you, come with repentance, come to the mercy of God, God who saved Jesus from the humiliation death on the cross, and he will send him back to judge only the Jew as he preached only for them. Quran, open, uh, read Quran with open heart and forget about your confusion Bible because the Bible is a dangerous book, a brain, not salvation, bring destruction and hellfire, as he give always give a double message and mixed message. I warn everybody from hellfire, especially those like uh, uh, Mr. Sam, and I don't trust a God 
like his God who uh, asked uh, to uh, for the the women to be rape open the pregnant women to be open uh, rape open and killing dashing a small baby on 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 the on on rocks and killing even animals uh, you attack you answer and you always talking about my messenger and uh, your house is built from glass and you're talking about me go and check your your bible how much how much bad it is uh, what can I say more? One minute. Anyway, anyway, uh, I, I'm gonna end end up with the chapter of the Quran. Those who disbelieve and avert people from the way of Allah, their their deed will be wasted. Mr. Sam, your deed will be wasted, and those who believe and do right deed will be and believe of what being sent down to Muhammad. Muhammad والسلام, it will be the truth from their Lord they will, will be forgiven from their sin and grant paradise with peace while your God asking for for blood to forgive you my God asking you to just repent and you are arrogant uh, bloody twister liar big mouse <laughs> <laughs> thank you I appreciate it okay. yeah, we will talk that. we will talk always we'll more talk more. I like you, man. We will talk I, about it. I like you. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. God bless you. Okay, um, uh, brother Sam, your okay. three minutes. Wrap up. Right. I, I, I thank him for the compliment. I'm arrogant, twisted, and I has no life. I has no life. That's what he told me. In spite of him attacking and blasphemy, I still love this guy. I pray Jesus saves him. But notice he kept saying, you know, my God doesn't need sacrifice or blood. He doesn't know the Quran or he doesn't know the Hadith because he obviously hasn't read chapter 22, verses 33 to 36 of the Quran. Chapter 22, verses 33, 36, it says, In them you have benefits for a term appointment. In the end, their place of sacrifice is near the ancient house. To every people did we appoint rites of sacrifice. So according to the Quran, for every people, Allah ordained them to offer blood sacrifices. Oh, but he said his God doesn't need sacrifices. So then we go to Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Of 2234, Allah tells us that sacrifice and shedding of blood in the name of Allah has been prescribed for all nations. Oh, but my God doesn't need sacrifices, Sam. You arrogant kafir mushrik. Oh, but hold on. Sunan Ibn Majah. Sunan Ibn Majah says it was narrated from Aisha that the Prophet said, The son of Adam does not do any deed on the day of sacrifice that is dearer to me than shedding blood. Its blood is accepted by Allah before it reaches the ground. Oh, but brother Sam, you Catholic, arrogant jerk, you pagan, you stupid. My God doesn't need sacrifices. So according to him, according to him, his God, Allah, wasted everyone's time in shedding millions of animal blood, all because he doesn't need sacrifice. What a stupid thing for God to do because he doesn't need sacrifice. But, oh, it gets worse for my friend because not only does Allah need sacrifice, according to Sahih Muslim, book 6668, Allah will burn Jews and Christians in hell for the sins of Muslims. Abu Burda reported Allah's messenger saying, there would come people amongst the Muslims on the day of resurrection with as heavy sins as a mountain, and Allah would forgive them and place in their stead the Jews and Christians. So Allah who doesn't need blood sacrifice commands blood sacrifice. Allah who doesn't need human sacrifice says, these Jews and Christians, they will all burn in hell because of the sins of the Muslims. I will put it on them. And yet I am the stupid, arrogant kafir. Then he misquotes Psalm 137 verses 7 to 9. Psalm 137, 79. I don't need a God who rapes women. Oh, but you do follow a God who told your prophet, prostitute women, treat them as whores, call it muta. Chapter 4, verse 24, something that even the Shia do to this day so that someone can come to Yahya's sister if she's not married. Hey, sweetie, can I marry you for three days? I give you money. That's marriage. It's not prostitution. Anyone with common sense would tell you that is prostitution, teaching, treating women as whores. But the original Arabian pimp was Allah and his messenger. So yes, no, my God doesn't do that. And then if you go to chapter 4, verse 24, it also says that married women are unlawful for you except the captives. Then you go to Sunan Abu Dawood. 
Number 2150, when you take a married woman who's captive, she's beautiful, you can rape her, defile her, even though her husband's alive, and sell her. But, oh, my God, doesn't order women to be raped and their wombs you know, ripped open. That's not my God, because your God is not the God of the Quran. It's not the God of the Hadith. It's a God you made up in your own imagination. You're not a Muslim. You're not a Christian. You are Yahya. The guy who makes it up as he goes along, may Jesus have mercy on your pathetic soul and save you from this filthy Muhammad, his false God, and bring you to his feet and forgive you. And may the Lord Jesus save your Catholic wife and bring her to the Trinity and through her prayers break you. It's enough. Give up on Muhammad, the son of Satan. Worship the God that your wife's parents worship, the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Jesus lives. Muhammad is dead and buried. Christ is Lord forever and ever. <clears throat> Well, that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sam. Brilliant. Brilliant exchanges there. Emotional. It, it has been emotion. It, it has been an emotional ride. And um, I, I have. I have to many admit points. something. I have wait, to wait, admit something. Wait, 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 yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, yeah, yeah. Thank you, yeah, Because so you, you had about three hours of of um of debating, Sam. So I, I just like to take this opportunity to thank you both for coming on the show. Thank you, Yahya. Thank you, Sam Shamoon. You guys can uh, subscribe to the channels. The links, I believe, are on the description box. Shamoonian is obviously Sam's uh, YouTube channel. And uh, Islam Defender Yahya is also on the description box. And he's, you know, we love Yahya. We love Yahya. And we, we pray for well, Yahya. We pray for his family. We pray, we pray that he comes to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ because... Amen. You know, yeah, here that um, we've been we uh, we've essentially answered all your questions thoroughly, and I do pray that the Holy Spirit touches your heart and Amen. Amen. dwell on those on those answers and really come to the truth. We we do we do pray for you, uh, pray for that, uh, yeah, yeah. So God bless you and your family. God bless everybody that's uh, that uh, on, on the chat right now. T P Bear, Gabriel Stark, Gabriel, Mister Kish, Hayes, Last Jedi, all you guys. Thank you for the super chats, Engman. Uh, all you guys, Deus Vault, Gina, thank you guys, thank you, Warriors for Christ. Uh, make sure you guys are also, are also supporting uh, debaters. Make sure you share the link as well, download on the channels, and um, upload it on your channels. There's no problem with that. So, with that in mind, thank you all, thank you, Sam, and thank you guys. God bless you all. Take care, God bless it. Blessings to you all.